What a time it was With so few friends to turn to What a time it was When all we did seemed wrong We'd broken all our bonds And the battle plan was drawn What a time, what a time it was 1965, the year of UDI Who'd have thought the country would survive or stay alive? The UN made us outcasts And the British said we couldn't last That we would fall when the oil did not arrive Now I don't say we were right And I don't say we were wrong I'm just trying to tell it like it was in simple song You see, when people love their homeland They regard it as their own land And they fight whether they're right or they are wrong What a time it was With all the world against us What a time it was Not all we did was wrong We'd broken all our bonds But life kept going on What a time, what a time it was 1966 saw some ocean politics When two men climbed the tiger To have talks about the talks They talked and talked and talked and talked And talked and talked some more The negotiations ended in deadlock And in 1968 There was another great debate This time aboard the fearless But the end was much the same November saw a new flag raised While the people prayed for better days And hope was still the surname of the game And in 1970 Our republic came to be Solutions seemed to fly a little further out of reach But the next year through the gloom Came Sir Alec Douglas Hume And it seemed they'd found a way across the breach So in early 72 Lord Pierce and his retinue Arrived to put the nation to a test that they had planned But still it seemed the plan was bad, no better than the last they'd had And knows the word we heard across the land What a time it was, with all the world against us What a time it was, when all we did seemed wrong We'd broken all our bonds and the battle plan was drawn What a time, what a time it was 1975, and Mr. Forster had arrived With President Kaunda for some talks across the falls But nothing there could be resolved The problem still was too involved And the impetus slowed down until it stalled 1976 was when Cosmopolitics Finally put pressure on the players in the game Kissinger's proposals were broadcast to the nation With one man and one vote, the final aim Well, Geneva should have sealed it But instead it just revealed That all the players in the game were pulled apart Well, they had to find a way To start again another day With all prepared to take a peaceful part What a time it was With all the world against us What a time it was When all we did seemed wrong We'd broken all our bonds And the battle carried on What a time, what a time it was Now in 1978 While the rest still vacillate We found a way to work it out within the land Never mind the rest, what we're doing's for the best And all we want is a peace we understand There'll be votes for all the folks And with sanctions gone we hope To rebuild this little country to a proud and single nation 
We've got to end this dreadful war We found what we've been fighting for Will the world wake up and stop this conflagration? What a time it's been So few friends to turn to What a time it's been When all we did seemed wrong We're trying to put things right But the battle still goes on What a time, what a time it's been What a time, what a time it was indeed, folks. Welcome to the stream. A little bit of history on Rhodesia. And I know I'm not wearing a rugby jersey. Not at all. This time I'm wearing a hockey jersey. <laughs> the chocolate drip. Check it out, folks. The chocolate drip Hershey Bears jersey just came in the mail today. I ordered it on September 29th. Special edition rugby or ho hockey jersey here. Could you, play, could you play Taking the Easy Way Home from David Scobie? Um, will it get me a copyright strike? <laughs> will it get me a copyright strike? I'll take a look at it and see if I can. But folks, welcome to the stream uh, on Veterans Day, Armistice Day, Remembrance Day, and also it is Rhodesia Day, folks. And thanks for tuning in so much for that. Chris Norby just asked if I could play Taking the Easy Way Home. I'll try to remember that from David Scobie here shortly, but welcome to everybody on the stream right now. Um, what a time it was indeed. Uh, Rhodesia, a very different uh, place than what uh, its successor state has become, Zimbabwe. Um, a state that started with so much promise and then uh, quickly went off the rails so very, very quickly, courtesy of the thugs from the kleptocracy of ZANU-PF, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, Emerson Managagua, Konstantin Chiwengo, Solomon Majuru, the list goes on and on of criminals left and right, folks. Welcome to the channel, folks. What a sad song indeed for the beloved country. Yep. I'm not a candy person, but I love chocolates. <laughs> well, here's a chocolate jersey for you, Erica. This is a pretty cool one here. Um, unfortunately, there's no hockey. Normally, we would have hockey already underway. We would already be at the beginning of the American Hockey League season. I would have already been most likely to three or four games because the early season games are the ones they sell at a discounted price, and I'm too frugal to pay full price for, for hockey tickets or any other sporting events. So I would have already gone to two or three, maybe four games by now, but there's no hockey, courtesy of the political hysteria. Folks, welcome to Rhodesia Day here on Chris Wynow. Africa. No, I'm not a Rhodesian. I'm not a Rhodey. Never have been. Never claimed to be one. Simply someone that shares an affinity with the history of the country. That doesn't mean that I endorse all that happened in Rhodesia. I'm just saying that I have an affinity for folks there. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in, folks. I hope that you find this to be an interesting discussion today. I will uh, take calls at some point because I've turned this into a call-in session as well. So I have Zoom open. We'll get started on that. But before we do that, I just want to show you a couple minutes of this one. Where's it at? Come on here. Here, let's do a couple of clips. We're going to do a few clips from here. And my apologies to Associated Press and to Memories of Rhodesia. Thank you for this. This is their material. I don't know if it's copyrighted. It doesn't say copyrighted. But uh, I am showing a few videos about Rhodesia and the history of Rhodesia as we uh, continue this stream. So, okay, folks, here's another one. This one's from British Patha. And uh, just a couple minutes of this about the Kariba Dam. I don't have my microphone on. I just realized I didn't have my microphone on. Folks, sorry about that. I just, uh, yeah, it's on mute. Sorry, I, I put on mute because the sound reverbs. My apologies. So folks, uh, yeah, uh, I got it. I like 100, no sound, no sounds. Sound is there now. Anyway, folks, uh, yeah, so that was um, just a short clip on Kariba, the Kariba Dam, which was a massive uh, project in the northern part along the Zambezi River, which is the border. Uh, so this was done for hydroelectric power generation also, as you can see, also for creating recreational and tourism facilities and also for fishing industry. So there you go. Yeah, I'm back. Thank you. Sorry about that. That was my entirely Chris's error. Sorry about that. Uh, it happens occasionally. I don't have my stream deck set up. Yanni, Yanni Funnevault still, still banning me here. I got to get this thing set up properly. So if I get that, it would mute it properly. But I'll work on that. Uh, I've been very busy. I'm teaching again tomorrow and Friday. So I've uh, been eating up my time. Um, Boom Shakalaka says, my parents are Rhodesians. Was even, uh, why'd the message go away? Why'd you take the message away? Ah, Boom Shakalaki. I, I was reading it. You said your parents are Rhodesian. Then it went away. 
Uh, it was even named after a lake in southeast of Masvingo. Masvingo, of course, is where Great Zimbabwe is located at, folks, if you're not familiar with it. Um, the original name of the town I'm, is escaping me. It's um, Salisbury was, was Harare, but I can't remember the name of um, Masvingo. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, so the sound is back. Sorry about that, folks. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to Rhodesia Day here in Chris Wine Africa. That was a short clip about the Kariba Dam in the northern part along the Zambezi. So uh, also the famous uh, near location where a Rhodesian Airways flight was shot down by terrorists. And um, then when it landed safely and most of the passengers survived, uh, they came along and murdered them in cold blood on the ground. Yeah, the brutal things that happened during that conflict, the second Chimaringa. The first Chimaringa, of course, occurred in the 1890s, or after the 1890s, after British column moved up into Mashona land, in Matabela land. Uh, the first Chimaringa was a war of to um, overthrow the British who were settling there, and it failed. The second Chimaringa, of course, was this war, which lasted from after UDI, 66, essentially, until 1979, about 13, 14 years long. And the third Chimaranga, of course, is the mythical name attached to the murder of innocent civilians, farmers, and farm workers, and the oppression, political oppression of opposition opponents in Zimbabwe from 2000 until, well, until today, for that matter. All right, Ronel Colcom says, my mom's family were from Rhodesia. Three of my siblings were born there. See, there you go, folks. The real monster, Fort Victoria. Thank you. Uh, it was Fort Victoria. That's correct. Not Masvingo. Yeah, so thank you. I couldn't, was tip of my tongue. Uh, Boom grew up, uh, oh, Lynn says, I grew up in Umvuma near Fort Victoria, now known as Masvingo. Yes, I've been there to the Flamboyant Hotel. The Royal Flamboyant Hotel is located uh, in Masvingo. That's where I stayed overnight when I went to watch, uh, go to Great Zimbabwe. I was there while they were murdering farm workers and farmers in 2000. So at the moment that that was all rolling on and taking place in Zimbabwe, I was traveling around the countryside and observing it. Um, my parents are Rhodesians. I even married a Oh, I already got this. Sorry, Mary Lee. Shane Matson says, every year this time I play a song, Rex brings back great memories. Thanks, Shane. Um, lots of Wen Wes here. Good to see. Um, what else we got here? Robin says, 100 people watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah, hit the like button. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Peaky, where's the sound? It was hidden. I hid the remote button. Sorry about that. Tiger fishing on Lake Korea, but indeed, Johan Rogers. That's right, tiger fish. That was right. I see somebody recognize that. Hershey kisses. Your hair is like the foil wrapper, <laughs> says Boom Jocko. Okay. Yeah, I guess it is. My hair is like the tin foil wrapper at a Hershey's kiss. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody knows Hershey's kisses, even people in Africa. So this is for the Hershey Bears Hockey Club, the oldest club from 1938 in the American Hockey League, uh, oldest surviving club. And you can see it's the chocolate drip jersey. See the chocolate dripping down there? <laughs> Even on the sleeves. Pretty cool. Just came in the mail today, so I thought I'd wear it since it came in the mail. I ordered it on September 29th. Right, folks. Um, so I'm going to start taking calls here shortly. Um, anyone who's a roadie who's ready to call in. But before we do that, I want to show this um, very quickly. This piece, which is a report from 60 Minutes or from Morley Safer. Is this the one? Come on, where's it at? Uh, I'm going to make sure I get the right one here. I don't want to get you the wrong one. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, here's another. We'll play this one. This is a movie tone. This is a tour of Rhodesia in 1960, ladies and gentlemen, before UDI, when it was still inside the British Empire. So here you go, folks. I'm going to play this one. This is from a movie tone, and it uh, should be interesting. So here we go. Where is that at? Come on. Just trying to get to the right spot here. Here we go. Where are we? Oh, where's my thing at? Something's not right here, folks. Just a moment. It'll be just a moment. Somehow my... Something's happened. Um, where is... Oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is Movie Tone. Jeffrey Sumner reporting. London Airport and the start of another royal tour. The Queen was there to see her mother off on a 6,000-mile flight by BOAC Britannia to Salisbury. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's tour of the Rhodesias and Nyassa land was planned to last three weeks. And perhaps the most notable engagement of her visit would be the official opening of the great Kariba Dam. In view of recent violence in the Copper Belt area of northern Rhodesia, special precautions are being taken, of course. But no changes in the program of the tour had as yet been announced. All good wishes went with the Royal Traveller for a successful and enjoyable trip.
Salisbury's wet weather had given way to brilliant sunshine in time for the Queen Mother's arrival. The Governor-General, Lord Dalhousie, led the official welcome and made the presentations to Her Majesty. The Guard of Honour was found by the 1st Battalion, the Royal Rhodesia Regiment. A big popular welcome was in store on the drive from the airport to the federal capital. Apart from the ceremonial escort, troops and police were conspicuous by their absence. Salisbury, in fact, had turned out in full force to give the Queen Mother the friendliest of greetings all the way. Crowds in the streets were estimated to number 60,000 probably the biggest ever seen here. The people had waited hours just to see her drive past. It was an auspicious beginning to the tour with everyone cheering the royal visitor as she now stopped for the civic reception at the city centre. Managing your still, still, still on mute. Sorry about that. That's the Queen's visit to uh, Rhodesia in 1960, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, that's the same Queen. <laughs> queen Elizabeth is still the Queen of England and Scotland and Wales. She's still the Queen. Uh, that was 1960, folks. 60 years ago. Can you imagine it? 60 years ago, um, she's still the queen. Well, anyway, so that was interesting. I hope you enjoyed that. That was from the Royal Rhodesian Tour in 1960, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, it was, in fact, a very much a different time, to say the least. Yeah, exactly. So um, so here we go. Let's see something here. All right, so this uh, video I'm going to show you in just a moment here before we get to any calls is... Um, is from Morley Safer and Winds of Change talking about uh, events in Rhodesia. And it's also kind of, uh, it's kind of like almost like a propaganda film for Rhodesia when it starts out, which is ironic because the, the left-leaning press turned very much against Rhodesia by the mid-1970s. So, uh, Robin, we call them bioscopes, says Erica. Um, while the queen is still going strong. Yeah, she is, man. She's been, taking, she's been queen, what, since 1947 or something like that? It's just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Ron von Ryman says, don't give your age away, Erica. Yeah, that's good advice, Ron. Never share your age. Okay, um, okay. Uh, I just heard from Lauren uh, Southern's uh, team. They said, uh, okay, things are looking good. Okay. Um, let's see, what am I missing here? Okay, caught up on the chat. So there you go, folks. Let me play one more clip, and then I'll turn around. So if you are a roadie and you'd like to call in, uh, you don't have to put your camera on if you just want to hide your face. That's fine. Uh, but you'll be able to call in the Zoom session after this. I'm going to do about, about three minutes of this video clip with Morley Safer. And then we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and start taking calls to talk about Rhodesia Day. But b before I do that, before I take the calls, I'll start talking about the size of Rhodesia, a little bit of the history, and then we'll take folks' calls, okay? So here we go. This is a Morley Safer reporting on Rhodesia. And this is back around 1977, I think it is, about three years before the end. So here you go. Rhodesia is a country about the size of California with a population less than Florida's. Six million blacks who have not very much, a quarter of a million whites who have just about everything. And let's get the travelogue part of this story out of the way. Rhodesia is just north of South Africa and, with the exception of South Africa, is surrounded by hostile neighbors. It is a country of magnificent sights, of magnificent climate. Seen so lovely, they must have been gazed upon by angels, is the way the good Dr. Livingston described Victoria Falls when he came upon them in 1855. When the first white settlers trekked in about 90 years ago, they were not unlike the American settlers who moved west a little earlier. The idea of the little house on the prairie is as African as it is American. The natives were less hostile here, and so indeed were the settlers who trekked and farmed and built and wrought themselves a great country. A country that by the rules of the first half of this century was perfectly okay. But for all kinds of reasons, the rules of the second half of the century have been changed. And Rhodesia is an outcast nation. Up to 1965, it was a self-governing colony of Britain. 
But when Britain demanded that Rhodesia give way to majority rule, black rule, the Prime Minister Ian Smith declared the colony independent. The white minority was charting its own course. It was denounced as an outlaw nation. Economic sanctions were placed on imports and exports. Britain said Smith wouldn't last two weeks. He's lasted 12 years. But 12 years of turmoil. In the 70s, militant black nationalists formed the Patriotic Front. Using sanctuaries in other African states and Soviet arms, they declared guerrilla war against the whites and against blacks who cooperated with the government. The front was led by two men, Joshua Nkomo and Robert Mugabe, bitter rivals but allies against Smith. Some whites pulled out, but mostly they dug in their heels, and the country became an armed camp. Indeed, that's how I remember the microphone. Indeed, it did become an armed camp, folks, and it became progressively uh, more difficult to, con to continue the country as it was. We'll take calls here in just a moment. That was morally safer reporting on uh, the Rhodesia situation back in the late 1970s. So I just wanted to do a... Uh, do a quick map to show you. It's important to point out that uh, in its history for a time, uh, Rhodesia, which became known as Zimbabwe, was part of another organization, another state, the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. So you'll see that over my shoulder right there, folks. Let me lean over here a little bit like this. So you'll see that what is today known as Zambia was northern Rhodesia. And I think someone just mentioned, um, Rob, Rob Lister had mentioned that he was born in um, Mufalera in northern Rhodesia, and of course Nyasaland is the name for Malawi, the warm heart of Africa, was all part once of one colonial grouping here. Something just happened, what's that? Hang on, sorry. Um, Engo Fanobia just subscribed, well that's an interesting name, thank you for subscribing. So you see here the three uh, co independent countries became Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Malawi eventually were all part of the same federation at one time. And you'll see that um, the most of the whites who lived in this area lived in what is southern Rhodesia or Rhodesia or Zimbabwe eventually. And that was at, at its peak, no more than about 300,000 total living in a population of about about um, 6 million. It was initially 3 million, but then doubling by the time it became Zimbabwe, 6 million black Africans living there. So that represented most of the white population. About 70,000 lived in northern Rhodesia, including Rob, obviously born there, and then only about 9,000 living in Nyasaland back then. So the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. And of course, we go back to 1890 when the British first crossed over and started settling in what became Rhodesia and continue on from that time frame. But 1923 became a crown colony in 19. 1965, uh, uh, Rhodesia became a uh, unilateral declaration of independence, of course, famously by Ian Smith and the Rhodesian Front, his political party declaring independence to continue minority rule, um, ostensibly to create a plan eventually for uh, everyone to have a vote in the country. But um, not a lot of progress was made for the first five or six years, which led to the liberation movement stepping up their war and getting support from the Chinese and from the Russians, operating out of Mozambique and out of Zambia and uh, causing problems, and even operating Botswana without the approval of the Botswana authorities and causing all kinds of chaos over there. So both movements, ZANU and ZAPU, the Zimbabwe African National Union under Robert Mugabe, and ZAPU, which predates ZANU, the Zimbabwe African Patriotic Union, uh, People's Union, excuse me, which is uh, ZAPU under Joshua Nkomo, which is the original movement ahead of uh, Mugabe, the school teacher who ran off and hid in Ghana uh, for a long time. But um, yeah, these two movements uh, had their own armed wings, Zipra and Zanla, which fought in the bush and eventually formed the Patriotic Front in the 1970s to overcome Rhodesian forces who fought gallantly against this. And th these groups, it should be noted, murdered tens of thousands of black Africans, uh, many of whom no no reason whatsoever, just slaughtered them in their villages to sow chaos and terror to get them to support these movements. And so there you go, folks. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and let folks come in now. Uh, let me go ahead and get the uh, link. If you are a roadie and want to call in, this is the link now. Or even if you're someone who is in Rhodesia uh, or, or is familiar with it and would like to call in and share your experiences, talk about it, you're welcome to do that. So please do it. There's the link, folks. We'll see if we get any calls in. So thank you for tuning in to Rhodesia Day. Wow, much larger audience than I anticipated for this conversation today, folks. You're listening to Chris White Africa on the Adaba Africa channel. Today is November 11th, Armistice Day, Remembrance Day, Veterans Day, and it's also Rhodesia Day. It's the day that the, uh, they declared unilateral, unilateral declaration of independence from the United Kingdom under the Rhodesian Front of Ian Smith. So folks, uh, the link is there. If you'd like to call in, let me get my earpiece ready just in case somebody does call in. But if you don't call in, I can keep going. Don't worry about it. Michael Lawson said, I used to go to Rhodesia to see the Zimbabwe ruins. Now I go to Zimbabwe to see the Rhodesia. 
Wow. Oh, isn't that spot on? Isn't that spot on? Well said there, Michael. Well said. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just putting my micro my earpiece in so I don't get reverb if I make calls in. That's a good one. That's actually pretty funny. And sadly, it's true, folks. Sadly, it's true. Uh, I saw someone here earlier said they wish that the Rhodesians would come back. I wouldn't count on that. Um, Rob says Ian Smith was right on the button with his predictions for African one man, one vote. Well, he was, sadly. And they've the Zimbabwean um, kleptocracy has proven... <clears throat> Ian Smith, and has also proven racist to be right. Racist in South Africa said that black people couldn't rule. They can rule, but unfortunately, the criminals in the ANC are giving the impression that black people can't rule. And the thugocracy that is ZANU PF has proven uh, in Zimbabwe that uh, it's a questionable um, proposition. But of course, blacks, Africans lead countries all over the continent and do perfectly fine. Ruins, one of the oldest. It is, Anel. It's an amazing site. I've been there. I really uh, found it fascinating. Beautiful place to go visit. Um, Navan Clement says, what should have happened to prevent Rhodesia turning into the current Zimbabwe? Well, a number of things. Number one is that British negligence should not have been taking place. If the British had actually begun to enforce one man, one vote much sooner and moving Zimbabwe, to, whoops, here we go, Coach Jacques Gymnastic. If they'd done it much sooner, then we would never have seen this. But they waited till it was too late in the game. Um, and uh, Coach Jacques Jacoby Gymnastics is coming on. Okay. Um, are you there? Yes, I am. You've got to put your computer volume down because there's a feedback from me talking. So if, if you're listening on the computer, you're going to have to have earpieces in uh, so that you can hear me talk. Can you hear me? Okay, folks, uh, uh, Jacques has put the microphone on mute. I'll give Jacques a moment to come in here. So if you call in, you've got to put your microphone uh, your computer, if you're listening on a computer to the stream, what you have to do is you have to put an earpiece in or you won't be able to watch the stream. You'll just be able to put your computer on mute. But then if your computer is what you're listening to. Um, so anyway, um, it's it's a bit of a problem. What you need to do, Jacques, just go into the YouTube that you're watching. Okay, Jacques dropped off. You just go into the YouTube that you're watching. Put that on mute so it doesn't feed back over. You can watch the chat. You can watch the video continue. But just put it on mute inside of there. And if you put it on mute, then you can talk to me or, and also put your piece in. There you go. Sorry about that. Jacques, come on back in. I'll hopefully get you back here shortly. Folks, yeah, so you're listening to Chris White Africa on the Dab Africa channel. I'm taking calls now from folks uh, who are Rhodes, uh, Rhodesians or uh, were Rhodesians. Rhodesians never die though, so you're still around. And if you uh, also have experiences there, you're welcome to call in as well. So getting cold and days very short in Amsterdam, says Michael Lawson. Okay. Jacqueline Larson says, my grandparents and mother lived there. I can still remember all the war stories my granny told me about. It makes me so sad. Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zimbabwe. Uh, not a pleasant thought there at the end, Jacqueline. Uh, Jocelyn, uh, I agree with you. Um, uh, okay, what else? Great Robert Gabe Mugabe paved the way for progress and harmony within a serene democratic system. The ANC of South Africa is currently emulating this great leader. Heinrich is obviously being a facetious. <laughs> Ronell says, this makes me think of my mom. She passed away on August 18th. She always spoke about Rhodesia. My dad came from South Africa and met my mom in Rhodesia. Thank you, mom. <laughs> oh, Ronell, thanks for sharing that. That's very kind of you to share that. Appreciate that. Um, Ron Riesler says, Ethiopia's proof they can rule. They were never colonized. Well, they actually were colonized. That's a myth. Uh, uh, Ethiopia was colonized by the Italians from 1936 to 1941. The Ethiopians vehemently deny they were colonized, but in fact, they're factually wrong. They were colonized. Uh, but yes, um, but also we can look at uh, Ethiopia. If you're looking for misrule, we can look at that under the communists who overthrew Haile Selassie's empire. So yeah, so uh, Ethiopia is not the best example of saying that blacks can can actually rule in Africa because black Africans can rule in Africa, but uh, Ethiopians don't view themselves as blacks for starters. So that's also a problem. But there's plenty of places where black Africans have ruled perfectly fine and brought good governance uh, across the countries that they're responsible for. So unfortunately, um, the racists made an argument and uh, some people believe in that argument. So that's the problem. So you have to refute these arguments. Alta's here. I didn't see Alta. Welcome to you. All right. Um, Michael says, uh, yeah, I already said that. Ian Smith was on the button. Happy Veterans Day, says Sean Eastman. Thank you for your service and dedication to the Republic of the United States. You're most welcome. It's my pleasure. Did it with pleasure. Uh, waiting for someone else to call in. Um, I know some people may not want to call in, but that's fine because um, I'm sure there's people out there that are abusive. Mike Mudian. Mudiana, Mu, Mudiana Simba, Simba said, I wish the Rhodesians come back to Zimbabwe. Well, I wish that uh, ZANU PF had uh, not been such corrupt, venal bastards. Um, they certainly had the opportunity to turn it into the land of milk and honey. 
Um, after the conflict, so much of the state uh, revenue was devoted to security in the late years of Rhodesia that uh, money was left wanting for infrastructure and for education, particularly for black, uh, black African education, but for education in general, so much money was devoted to it. So when the war ended, all those resources were freed up. Now, true, about a third of the or almost half the white population, about half the white population abandoned Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, and moved on to South Africa and other places. But those who stayed behind made valuable contributions to the country. They were Zimbabweans. And then, of course, they were abused for that later by Mugabe, who uh, the arrogant ass that he was, uh, said that he was magnanimous and that he let them stay. He let them stay? It's the land of their birth. They can stay there if they want and contribute to it. But unfortunately, uh, Mugabe and ZANU-PF create a fictional racial narrative. Uh, by the way, most of the people who are actually genuine racist in Rhodesia left long before Mugabe ever became president. Vernon says, any liberation organization done well in Africa after taking over? I'd like to know, maybe that's what I want. I, yeah, it's a good question. I can't think of a single one that was a liberation movement that successfully transitioned to a proper, legitimate government uh, and ruling in a country in a productive fashion. I can't think of a single one. Every single liberation movement has turned out to be a disaster for the country they govern. It, that's without exception, and that includes the ANC and SWAPO in, in Namibia. 30 years after independence, Namibia, over half the population, still lives in abject poverty. Not because of apartheid, not because white people stole everything, not because of, of, of foreign rule, but because of indigenous proper rule in the country by a bunch of socialists and communists who don't know how to run a country and who have not provided for poor Namibians. Now, I'm a person who believes in small government, but I'm here to tell you that in a situation like Namibia at independence, it should have made far greater progress at this stage. Much easier to do. I could turn that country around in a decade, in a decade. And there would be far fewer people living in poverty. People would be much wealthier and they'd be much better educated. And it would be a premier tourist destination, and we would be drawing tourists from all over the world, not just from Germany and South Africa and occasionally from the United States. Boom Shakalaka says, my granddad always read me the poem about Rhodesia by James Sturgis. Um, almost licking my ear if you paid attention. <laughs> Could South Africa also be heading to another Rhodesia says Sea World Future? Well, I've argued against that for a long time, but uh, frankly, it's quite frightening what's happening in South Africa now with the government focusing on the scandemic and using it as an excuse to steal liberty and imprison people and criminalize South Africans, mostly minorities, because that's their intent. But uh, in looking the other way, while people are brutalized and butchered on rural areas in South Africa, particularly commercial farms, white and black, and colored as well, but mostly whites. And then uh, allowing arsonists to destroy hundreds of thousands of acres and undermine the productivity of the country, the government sits back and, and says nothing. And then, and, and then the president comes on with his ludicrous comments today in South Africa and says, that, well, the problem, of course, is because people are hanging around and they're, they're being together and they're partying and not maintaining distance and not having proper ventilation. Uh, you know, proper ventilation helps the germs spread, you genius. So I don't really understand what you mean, proper ventilation. Um, if the virus is sitting on a surface, it's not going to get you if it's not being blown around by the wind. However, if you have ventilation spreading things around and spreading cough droplets and spreading snot droplets around, you're going to get the disease. So that doesn't make much sense. But beyond that, um, apparently there is no virus amongst any single person who gets their streetwise three-piece chicken meal from KFC, courtesy of the economic freedom fools, uh, who take them in bus loads down to Senegal in the thousands to toy toy and destroy public property as they sing racist and violent domestic terrorist songs. Uh, there's no COVID there. Only people who go to parties are responsible for spreading COVID. There's no COVID in townships where the government fled from after murdering a dozen black South Africans uh, in the fear that there would be an uprising against them murdering other black South Africans. They fled the townships. There's no COVID there either. So apparently there's no COVID out there, folks. Looks like people are pretty shy about calling in. And that's fine. I appreciate that. Uh, Memories Rhodesia website, which is a great website, a great source, and I played one of the videos from that website. Uh, they used to take comments on uh, their channel, but some really nasty racists came on there, and so they just stopped taking comments, which is unfortunate. Ronald says, my mom's family lost everything in Rhodesia. Um, when did they lose it? Uh, in the 70s or after the farm invasions in 2000, Ronald? It's really sad. Sean says, wow, I was 17 in the sticks. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, man. I was 17 once too. Who else we got here? Uh, Hendo. Let me see what this is. Uh, there's a note here I left here. Let me see what I wrote there earlier. Okay, so sorry, I'm just reading a note that I left here. I forgot to take a look at this. Um, anyway, uh, somebody, if, if Hendo, is Gabby Golding here? Um, I don't know if I saw that. that. Maybe that's what I saw. Is Gabby Golding? 
Wow. Am I back? I'm back. My stream got disconnected there for a second, folks. Wow. What's that all about? Got disconnected. Sorry, I'm just looking around. Yeah, it's buffering because I got disconnected. What the heck is that all about? I got disconnected. Fascinating. Anyway, it says we're connected again. So uh, anyway, Hendo, I was, uh, I think you were looking for Gabby Golding. Folks, if you are, I'm back. I'm back, Eric. I don't leave. I'm back. Hopefully people came back. Yeah. Uh, folks, yeah. Uh, Red Ants. Red Ants. YouTube. I don't know. My computer, I doubt it's my computer. I took a look at it. I'm using half my resources, not my computer. Could be the connection, but I still had internet when that happened. So anyway, wow, wow. Well, I'll tell you, we're really messing with my channel. Anyway, so Gabby Golding, if you're on the channel and you're trying to chat and no one can see you, you need to check to see if you're in incognito. Uh, folks are now allow, allowed to do incognito status when they're chatting. And when you're incognito, nobody can see you. So I think that's important. You need to know that. Chris doesn't look like Friar Tuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do because it looks like a bag. Yeah, there you go. See the bear. There you go. I'm not Friar Tuck. Okay. Mike uh, says, what would we do as Zimbabweans to bring Rhodesia back? We truly need you guys to come back home. Mike, um, you, you need you need for, everyone needs for Zanu PF to be gone. Uh, I'm going to fix my screen here very quickly, folks. Hang on. Everyone needs for Zanu PF to be gone because they're just a bunch of thugs. They're thieves, they're murderers, and they're anti-democratic. They've never been interested in democracy. They've only been interested in stealing and pilfering for themselves. Listen, the commercial farms were only attacked in 2000 for two reasons. Number one, commercial farmers mistakenly thought that they lived in a democracy. They made the foolish mistake of thinking they lived in a democracy because they had lived 20 years in a peaceful country. They had voted. They had paid taxes. They had lived in peace and harmony with the exception of the of the uh, massacre of Endebele in Matabele and pretty much everyone else lived in peace and harmony for those 20 years. So... Some farmers, frustrated at the criminal activities of the government, started to support the opposition move for democratic uh, change, MDC, Morgan Chang Verizon's party, uh, Roy Bennett's party. And then Mugabe, who wanted a referendum in 1999 to give him overwhelming political power, basically to make the parliament nothing, give all the authority to the chief executive as president, this referendum was defeated. And it was defeated because commercial farmers in particular, and the MDC especially, campaigned against it, saying it was too much power for any president to have. And they were correct. So Mugabe, angry that he had been so magnanimous in letting whites stay in Zimbabwe, decided to take it out on commercial white farmers. And the other reason that they went after commercial white farmers is that from 1980 until, 19, until 2000, ZANU-PF had stolen everything they could, flinched and squeezed every bit of profit out of all the rest of the country, the mining sector, the, uh, the industrial sector, government, corruption, pervasive everywhere. They were running out of things to steal because Zimbabwe's economy began to stagnate around 1994. They started borrowing more and more money from the IMF and others, and they couldn't pay it back, and they got in trouble. When they couldn't pay back their IMF loans, they realized they were in deep crap. And so the part of the motivation for the farm invasions was to steal the farms so that they could profit from that. And that's what they did, and they undermined. So revenge from Mugabe because he felt betrayed by whites who owed him everything. He's full of it. Um, six feet under now, and also because there was nothing left to steal. They pilfered everything else. They couldn't steal. You can't get blood from a turnip, and there was no blood coming out of the turnip of Zimbabwe by 2000. The only blood that was left was productive was the agricultural sector, which was 14% of the economy, but had a far bigger impact. It was uh, two-thirds of export earnings and a huge chunk of revenue to the government, as well as money being stolen. Folks forget that the government marketing board forced the commercial farmers in Zimbabwe to sell things like maize at below market prices. So if the open market gave you $10 a bushel for maize, you would have to sell it to the government marketing board for $8 a bushel. Now, hopefully the $8 is enough for you to make a profit to pay for your seed, for your fertilizer, your farm labor, for your workers, for your taxes, to feed your family and pay debt that you owe for purchasing the farmland. Hopefully it was enough, but oftentimes it wasn't. So farmers wound up in debt because they had to go borrow more money. While the $2 difference, which was would have been profit, some of it, was put in the pockets of crooked ZANU-PF officials who then sold the grain that they purchased as a government for $8 a bushel to the public for $10 a bushel because that was the going rate on the marketplace, thereby impoverishing the farmers who had had enough. And that was what was going on in Zimbabwe. Also, folks, just to point this out in case anybody doesn't know this, the, the farming sector in Zimbabwe, 42% hmm, of all commercial farmland was sold after 1980, under Prime Minister Mugabe until 1988, and then President Mugabe. All that land was sold. So nearly half the land that whites stole in settler colonies with their kith and kin, 
half that land could have been returned or could, could have been handed over to black war veterans and or poor black Africans had the government been serious about it. Now, the government did buy farms. Oh, they absolutely did buy farms after 1980. They bought commercial farmland repeatedly. And they used the 63 million or 63 million pounds that the British government gave them from 1980 until about 1994. Lynn is trying to call in with no luck. Okay, uh, let me put the link up again, Lynn. Probably have no bandwidth there, Lynn. That might be a problem. If you do get in, we can just do voice, Lynn, instead of video. Um, so try it again. So there you go. Uh, link it back to the chat. So yeah, um, and some of that farmland was sold more than once. So there was more than one opportunity. See, that's the lie about the racist and the thugocracy of Zanu PF claiming that whites stole the land. You might have an argument there for some of the land, but also, by the way, much of what became commercial farmland was never productive land to begin with. Oh, when De Bruyne is trying to come in, okay? So it was never productive farmland. It was turned into productive farmland by commercial farmers who made it so. And so then got added to the mix of commercial farmland. Anyway, so Alwyn's coming in. Uh, hopefully we get connected here in just a second. Yeah, so uh, let me see. Um, still trying to connect. Trying to connect. Oh, you've got to turn the computer off. I can hear myself. You've got to turn the computer off. Turn, turn it on mute computer. on the computer. What is going on here? Something's really strange going on here. Yeah, there's all one. Okay, I can see him, but something's... I got, okay, i got to fix this. Something's wrong with my... Okay, there we go. All right. Wow, man. I thought my beard was epic. You got to take your mute off now. Now you're 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 on mute. Um, so I can't hear you. Are you there? No, I, I you're on mute, so I can't I can't hear you. I can see you, but I can't hear you. I can't I can't hear you. I can see you, but I can't hear you. Okay, so again, the problem here is you you've can't, got can't to take the browser, you. put the mute button on the so bottom there the because I'm getting feedback. Can't. Okay. No, 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 no. Not mute on the computer in your web browser. If you're watching with Internet Explorer, or you're watching with Firefox, you look down below the video, there's a little speaker button there. Click that for mute, and then you'll be able to talk to me, and I'll, I won't get the feedback. <laughs> yeah, Ron von Ryman says, I've met your master beard. Yeah, so inside your computer, and I'll just look at my computer right now. Um, so in your computer, you have a feed. And in that feed, you're going to have at the bottom, oh, come on, reload here. I'm trying to get a video to load here. It's not, give me a second here. So on the bottom left-hand side, I believe it's, yeah, at the bottom of the window on your left-hand side, you'll have, you'll have a, a pause button. Then you'll have the left and right. You'll have a little speaker. If you click that, you'll get a hash line through it, and that will put the speaker on mute, not for your computer, but for your browser. And then you can still watch this feed. Otherwise, you have to stop the feed. And then you can turn the speaker on. But what you've done is you've put your speaker on mute, or your, your microphone on mute on the channel. And uh, I need you to leave that on, otherwise I can't talk to you. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. No, okay, so you're still on mute, Alwyn. Uh, sorry, you've gotta, you've, gotta, you've gotta put the speaker on the computer, okay. That's better, Chris. Uh, okay, there you go, we got it, okay. All right, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Somehow I managed to figure that out out of a fucking yeah, don't, uh, say echo don't, chambers. Don't that, touch. Don't touch was, anything. Don't touch I anything. Say, I won't say. <laughs> you got but it that now. Was like an echo chamber of note. <laughs> right. Yeah. So but what what happens? Yeah. Let me just help anybody else who tries to call in because I, I I forget that not everybody knows this. When you're listening on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone, my voice is coming out, but YouTube has a delay. It's a minimum of three seconds. Usually it's ten or more. Uh, I've set it for ultra low latency, which is three seconds, but you wind up getting 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So you and I are talking and people don't hear it for 30 seconds later. But if you're listening to the video on your computer or your device, the sound comes out and then we get reverb. So what you have to do is just put the, the mute button on the feed, not on your computer or your device. Otherwise, we can't talk. So we can talk now. So what's the word, yeah, man? Chris. I'm loving that beard. I'm loving that oh, beard. Hey, oh, hey, Chris, it's, it's amazing to speak to you. Like, honestly... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> amazing man i love your work um i've got to say i'm sorry about the technical issue and uh, like it makes perfect sense it's like that old thing when you phone into a radio show yeah. and then the, yeah. the, turn the turn your radio down, down in the background please turn your radio uh, down in the background <laughs> that's the thing man. of course the difference uh, the difference with, the difference with that of course is that when you call into a radio program you could turn the radio off you can still hear what the guy's saying because you're on a separate line but when you're using your device to listen to the program yeah, I, 
and listen to the program yeah. and also use the same device to transmit, then you've got to know the difference there. So we're set right, now. It, 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 it sounded like you were you were shouting across like those, uh, what's that? <laughs> that, uh, that, yeah. that those caravines that have those echoes that just keep on going. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, he's telling me I have to do something, but I, who knows? You know? Okay, that's cool. Let's uh, let's move on from that. I think everybody's straight now. Actually, I, maybe we should do it more often. We just surged up over 200 viewers. So. <laughs> Nice. All right, so so what, uh, so what did you want to talk about, my friend? Oh, we were speaking about you were speaking about Zimbabwe and yeah. Rhodesia, and um, like I know this is more like you know me. I'm more about the farm murders and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say, like I I can see a clear a clear comparison between how uh, the farm murders and expropriation without compensation are spilling over from the old uh, Encontre sees where tactics and how that is what is happening. And that is why there is no political will to, to, to stop uh, this from happening. Um, no, I it's, mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a serious issue. Let me, I just got to take a break for a second, answer a question here. And we'll come back to that. But Ruben Rizla says, uh, Chris, is there a difference between colonizing and occupying a country regarding the Italians in Ethiopia? Don't you think it's the same? Uh, no, uh, Okay, it, it, it's not the same uh, occupying a country because you don't impose an alien system. You just put a temporary thing there. And that's the argument that a lot of Ethiopians make is that they were never colonized because the Ethiopians occupied for five years. But the problem with that is that the Ethiopians introduced law, introduced their own system of governance and imposed it on Ethiopians. Now, you can make the argument it was primarily just around Addis Ababa, but nonetheless, they did impose it. If it had simply been a case of like World War One in Tanganyika when the Allied troops came in and captured Dar es Salaam and occupied it, that's not colonization that's an occupation and later it became a, a british colony but it was anyway so there is a difference um and in my argument and i believe i'm factually correct ethiopia was colonized they just don't want to admit it but it was oddest back to the farms all went okay yeah so so what people no, don't talk about is that in rhodesia the farm murders were going on for many years brutal rapes and murders and torture that we're seeing in yeah. south africa now started taking place in the late 1960s already in rhodesia especially in farms in mashona land up along the northern border with zambia and mozambique the insurgents would come across and they would torture and murder and rape and disfigure people and they did it and that's why you see so many uh videos of rhodesians walking around the city streets with sidearms and with rifles because it wasn't safe to go anywhere and by the way that torture and murder wasn't exclusively reserved for white Rhodesians. They did it to lots of black uh, Rhodesia, uh, Zimbabweans, Rhodesians. Uh, now, what is not recovered in the press in South Africa is the murder of blacks on rural farms. And I just covered the murder of a cattle farmer who was shot in the head back on the 19th of August and just died this past week as a consequence of his wounds. He spent six weeks in a coma, came out of the coma, went home, and now he's died from his wounds. Also, uh, someone came on my chat and said something about, well, you know, um, is talking about this, that, and the other, and said that these groups, you know, people only care about whites. And I said, well, you know, it's interesting you say that, but it was Afri Forum that in 2014 was the only organization I could find a record of that reported the murder of a black couple on a farm in the free state. They were the first okay. to report it. They, 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 civil rights organization stepped forward and said it. They didn't just report murders of whites. You people just, when I say you people, I'm talking about leftists. You people choose to ignore the news because it doesn't fit your narrative. But here's the problem. With the farm murders in Rhodesia we saw in the 60s and 70s, we see similar activities in South Africa today and for the last two decades. And what I'm telling you now is that when whites are wiped out as commercial farmers and so many of them are gone, there will be far more black commercial farmers killed because it's a it's a phenomenon of terrorizing the countryside to take over the land for political purposes. And just like in Zimbabwe, once you've killed off or chased all the whites away, you turn on your black brothers and sisters and kill them in the same fashion. So that was a long, long answer. To that, but uh, what do you think of that? Yes, I I. I... I tend to agree. Absolutely. I mean, um, it, it feels it's similar to what happened in Mozambique as well. Yeah. I mean, my mother, my mother, uh, you know, helped Mozambican refugees um, and, and, and help integrate them into South Africa, help teach them English. Uh, and they fled. You know, you're talking about babies that were fed into grain, uh, what do you call them, sawmills, that they just pushed babies into sawmills and it's the same thing that ideology that is the issue we aren't talking about um skin color uh, yeah that's not the issue that's a it's a it's a, a way that absolute hatred has been refined and it keeps on being passed over to whoever can keep on going and doing that 
and uh, it, it is used for political gains and it is used for political means. But in the end of the day, that thing is the same thing that we've seen across the bulk of Africa, um, uh, where you it's it's just a focus on hatred and and uh, just vilifying vilifying a group, any group, any form of minority, so that your ideology gets passed along those lines. You know, um, I mean, the, the, what, what is the difference? What is the difference between the EFF and something, uh, you know, well, that's ethno-nationalism? What, what, where's the difference? Where does the line lie? You know, uh, fair enough. So the Nazis said they were Jews. Now they're saying they're white. And, and just because they're there, it's an easy fucking... Oh, sorry. It's, okay. it's an easy fucking... Sorry about that. It, I get a bit emotional. But, I, I, um, I did earlier today, or yesterday. I, I actually I felt kind of bad because I said something on air. So I, one word, but anyway, yeah. No, people get excited about it. It's, it's understandable. Uh, Anel Rothman says it took forty years for Zim to fall. Will it take another? No, it didn't take forty years. Anel, Zimbabwe fell in twenty years, nineteen eighty to two thousand. They went to crap in two thousand, and by two thousand one, it was a complete disaster. Millions were starving, and uh, if it wasn't for billions of dollars of assistance from the United States and food aid, and for our HIV program to provide anti retrovirus for over half a million Zimbabweans, the country would have been a complete disaster. Uh, so it fell in 20 years. Uh, the ANC's had 26 years to destroy South Africa. I would argue that from 1995 until about 2005, they weren't destroying the country. But since then, since the ascension of Jacob Zuma, it's been on a glide path of destruction. One which a lot of fools uh, or mistake or people who had false hope thought that Ramaphoria was going to change. And in fact, Sir Ramaphosa has been far more of a disaster for South Africa and South Africans than Jacob Zuma. At least Jacob Zuma was just an, a moronic, uneducated, illiterate thief. That's all he was. He wasn't full no, of racial I, hatred. I mean, if you know Zuma, he actually likes Afrikaners. No, but that's a that's a big thing. Yeah, is you you you're talking about like uh, the 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 silly, stupid showman, uh, as opposed to the really smart guy who just you know doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing. I mean, if if we if we're looking at track records, um, you know, Becky. Mbeki did better for our economy than anyone else. Um, he grew out of uh, out of um, you know Mandela's uh, Mandela's economy, and he grew from that. And then he got ousted. But yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy to think that anyone thinks Cyril is um, a good guy. Like uh, like I don't care. How can you not arrest? Like this is all we need. All we need is people behind bars. That's the very least. If I can do that, then we can start trusting again. But this is, you know, I mean, they haven't even signed. They haven't even signed. Eh? The UAE, or oh, actually, where, where's, where's, um, uh, where did the Guptas flee to? That is... Um, Probably back to India. Well, not the know. UAE. Dubai. Dubai, eh? Dubai, yeah. Dubai. Dubai has... The, the agreement is there all they, for the extradition treaty to be signed. All they have to do is sign it. That's all they have to do. Then we can start, you know, catching up. Then we can start arresting people, putting people behind bars. I mean, this is the same as with the Ace Magashula uh, warrant of arrest. Mursha, you know, ah, oh, great. <laughs> it's a warrant of arrest. What does this mean? We've yeah. had we've had state capture inquiries for how long? Years. Nothing. Years. The Zondo Commission. I don't. I don't even bother watching the Zondo Commission transmissions because it's useless. It's useless. They're giving they're giving the criminals time to know. They're publicly putting it out there so the the criminals know what is against them. They they're taking the witness statements. Everybody now knows. So they're giving them time because they, they, they're not following up immediately. They're not arresting anyone. What is the point? Or yeah. they, they, they're actually giving the criminals time to escape. This is, uh, you all cover up their tracks or whatever you want to call it. It is, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple things you got to catch in the comments here. Struz yeah. Bob says, how does Ramaphosa go from Codesa to 4.5 billion Rand? Exactly. It's corrupt. Uh, he was handed stakes in companies, nothing he earned. And for all the people who had Ramaphoria said, look at him, he's a smart businessman. He was handed $400 million worth of wealth. Uh, Walk in Beauty just subscribed. Thank you for subscription. $400 million of wealth. And in 26 years, he turned into $450 million. 
You can put the money in a bank and get that kind of money. That's not that's not a smart businessman. That's nothing. So that's the first thing. Second thing he really quick from the chat was that uh, Michael Lawson said Becky was totally neurotic against whites. Indeed, he has a massive inferiority complex, uh, Tabo and Becky. That's true. And because of his 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 hatred and his bigotry against whites and his inability to listen to white people because of his bigotry, he refused to accept that HIV is the proximate cause of AIDS. And as a consequence, hundreds of thousands of South Africans died. And tens of thousands, if not a few hundred thousand children were born with HIV who had no reason to be born with it because they were offered nevirapine to expectant mothers free of charge by foreign donors. And they refused to allow it to be used in South African hospitals and clinics and natal clinics. And so over uh, a few hundred thousand South Africans were born with HIV when less than half of them had to be. By the way, that drug today is over 90% effective and almost nobody gets it if you use the drug. And then the last Very thing cool. I want to get here is, hang on, last thing here was... Um, Vernon says that Suma is not stupid. As a politician, he was very strategic. He took out Mbeki, who I consider the smartest operator we had around the time. Uh, I don't know if Mbeki was the smartest operator, but yes, uh, I did say stupid, but but um, you misconstrued what I meant by stupid. Uh, uneducated is what I meant, uh, and I said illiterate because he is illiterate. Uh, Zuma, Zuma is very clever. If people forget that he was the head of intelligence from Conto Way. Yeah. The reason why he was so successful is he knows where all the bodies are. Sure. He has all the dirt on all the ANC politicians, and that's why he's still not in jail and why he's never been charged, because he, he can bury them by exposing their fraud and he knows all of it and he has all his context that's why anyway go ahead on um no i i i agree like upon uh, on the whole like mbeki like the issue with with aids and all that what he did was a mistake he thought like he would send zuma over to the to to to, to gain the zulu's vote right yeah he would send zuma off to gain the Zulu vote, and he underestimated how that would pan out. And then he also made the mistake of the whole AIDS, you know, fiasco. Like that shot him in the foot, and then they took power out of his hands. So it's not that I'm saying Mbeki is a great guy at all, but he was at the very least a better administrator. Than any of these guys. Oh yeah, there's, any- there's no. Well, the the, the the thing about Becky's time, and I said this at the time while it was unfolding, and today is that that, that was an administration of technocrats technocrats they they could run a bureaucracy relatively well at least the top people maybe not below that but they're able to make things work and that's that some good fortune plus good technocratic rule i mean we had we had effective people in charge of finance like trevor manuel uh whatever you think of trevor manuel he's he's awesome um i see lynn is in the waiting room uh, i'm gonna let her in just a second here but lynn hang tight mm-hmm. anyway so yeah so no you're right he was uh he was very they're good bureauc- bureaucratic uh, at least far better than anything that the ANC has produced before or since, so kind of the way. You know, it's like when Mandela, well, Mandela was president, people was like, he's a great president. Wise. Mandela wasn't a great yeah. president. He was a great leader, but um, all the work was done behind the scenes by Mbeki, so go ahead. No, are we letting Lynn in? Yeah, yeah, I'll let her in a second here. Um, any any last thoughts uh, or, or comments there, Alwyn? Uh, just like, first keep doing what you're doing, loving it. Um, so glad that, that there's someone out there who hears our voices and understands our circumstances. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for calling. It was a pleasure seeing you. And I love the beard, man. That's freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to go shopping for Buffelsfontein um, beard oil. <laughs> no, now, now we know what's on our Christmas list. All right, man. Cheers. All right, that's Alwyn De Bruin, who's been following the channel for a long time. That's the first time he called in, so thanks for calling in. Go ahead and drop yourself out. Then you can take the little silence off your your tab once in your browser once you're off. Okay. <laughs> um, let me see. I might have to help him out, get him out of there. So yeah, there he goes. Okay, Lynn is coming in now. Okay, Lynn, uh, looks like your audio is connecting. Um, looks like you finally got your your enough bandwidth to call in, maybe. Okay. And folks, you're listening to Chris White Africa on the Adaba Africa channel. It's Rhodesia Day. Uh, November 11th, and we're uh, celebrating that today with Rhodesians, uh, former Rhodesians, ex-Rhodesians, however you want to call them, uh, those who grew up in Rhodesia, the experience of it, and uh, we're just ch- chatting about uh, events there, and also anyone who's had an experience dealing with Rhodesia, or Zimbabwe for that matter, so you're welcome to call in. We're waiting for Lynn uh, to get connected right now. I don't see it, her voice. It doesn't have her microphone on there. I don't know why. Interesting. Lynn, are you there? I don't hear you if you are there. Um Oh, the audio is still connecting. Okay. Her audio is trying to connect. Her screen is off. That's fine. Rhodesia Broadcasting Corporation uh, could have been more interesting than discussing in Becky. UDI was a shock for the establishment, just like Trump is to society. Uh, Hank says, um, 
Hi right, to everyone. Uh, wow, the beard is probably Neanderthal's brother. <laughs> Maybe. The earlier oaks looked better at running the country because it was still a remnant of the handover. I don't believe it was anything to do with their good governance. Um, now, okay, uh, Michelle, um, I didn't say good governance. I said more effective, I think I said. If I said good governance, then I misspoke. Uh, more effective uh, than anything we've seen since then. Um, also growing because for lockdown. Yeah, no, it's this is this is a lockdown beard, folks. That's what it is. Mandela was on the outside of the real leadership ANC because he'd been in prison for all those years. Um Let's see. Um, you realize Mbeki and other elites ruled. That's correct. Mandela was able to push the same policy. Yeah, the problem with Mandela, of course, folks, Lynn, your, your, your volume is not coming on. It doesn't look promising for Lynn getting on the channel there. It's a shame. Lynn's always an interesting caller when she calls in. We appreciate Lynn's support for the channel. And Lynn was going through some tough times, but uh, things got brighter and rosier for her in the past few months. And so um, we're glad that things have turned in her favor a bit recently. Unlike a lot of people in South Africa where, where this lockdown has really caused a lot of problems. Digging the beard, uh, brew, uh, proper Dutchman. <laughs> Mandela became president because he was royal descent. Uh, no, he became president because uh, the parliament voted for him. That's why he became president. Uh, but it was a near miss thing. You know, they were all debating about whether it was going to be Mandela or someone else in the ANC. So, but Mandela was obviously the right move for the ANC. Uh, it certainly left the world with a sunny disposition towards the ANC. Uh, farm murders are out of hand. No, they've been out of hand for a long time, MF. It's just that nothing has happened to people who've been committing them. Lynn, it looks like you're not getting in. Uh, we're not hearing you. So uh, my apologies to Lynn, um, but, but it's not my fault. It's her uh, ISP provider, most likely, but she's trying to get in. So anyway, folks, um, while we wait for Lynn to see if she can get anything going there, Anel says, I can hire you guys for my children's Santa. Yeah, but Alwyn's beard isn't white. Santa's beard is white. See, it's like this. Alwyn has an awesome beard. And did you check out that mustache? Mine comes, my mustache comes down about here. His came down to about there on both sides, a little bit further down. So, wow, 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 wow. Nico says, must say we had great TV in Rhodesia. Uh, okay. Um, why the Zulu, Sutu, different cultures? Um, I don't understand what the question is, Liesl. Think about this. Why the Zulu... Um, I don't understand what the question's about. Lynn is trying to connect the audio once again, and it sounds connected, and then it went mute. Your, your audio connected, Lynn. Now it's on mute. So you got it connected, so take it off mute, and we'll be able to hear you. Hopefully. <laughs> We're being very patient with, with Lynn trying to connect here. Oh, there, there we go. I can hear Lynn. Yay. <laughs> and there was much rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so leave, leave your camera off because I suspect that that'll knock your connection out. Lynn, how are you today? All right, thank you. Uh, very emotional from your intro, uh, but it was lovely to see. Uh, thank you so, so much for doing this for me, Chris. I'm so, so grateful. Uh, Lynn, it wasn't for you, but okay, I'll say it was for you, is it, but, but I, did it at, at your, <laughs> but I, I am, did it at your request. That's correct. Yes, thank you so, so much. And I know it means a lot to everybody that is watching the channel at the moment. Um, just so that you know, um, I did post your link out to all Rhodesian Facebook pages. So don't be surprised if you get lots of views after the fact as well. Well, I hope so. so. I hope that's the case. And if anybody's in here from uh, from any of those uh, those Facebook pages and, and sites where Rhodesians gather, uh, you're welcome. You're most welcome to the channel. You've always been welcome here. Um, we, we deal with Zimbabwe quite a bit, although not much of late because there's kind of a media silence on what's happening in Zimbabwe, so it's hard to report. And I don't currently have any colleagues or friends who are living in Zimbabwe, just ones who are closer here. So, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, we're happy to have you, and you're welcome to come on the channel. Feel free to become a subscriber by pushing the subscription button right below the video, and you'll find that there's content of all of Africa, but a special emphasis here in Southern Africa, and especially on, on Zimbabwe, Rhodesia, and South Africa. So I, I've done a lot of coverage and writing on Zimbabwe over the years. And so Lynn asked me if I would do a, a, uh, a, a show on the 11th to celebrate Rhodesia Day. And I said, sure. So here we are. So this is a response request from Lynn. Uh, but earlier today, of course, I did the Veterans Day because um, we, we celebrate veterans on on, um, on Armistice Day slash Remembrance Day slash Veterans Day. So Lynn, um, any any memory you can share with us that's not too emotional, gets you upset about, you know, growing up in Rhodesia? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do my best. Um, well, as I said in the chat, I grew up in Mvuma, mm -hmm. uh, which is on the way to Inkledorn to Salisbury, Harare. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was in the middle between Fort Vic, Guelo, and um, Inkledorn. Do you remember Inkledorn? Yes. A little railway <laughs> railway line you travel over to go to the Salisbury, Harare. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes, now I had a lovely time growing up in Mvuma. Uh, the sense of community there was absolutely amazing. 
was more a mining town, a, a farming um, area. Um, and everybody cared about everybody else, especially when young young guys got called up to the border. And everybody in the community just stepped up and looked after the wife and kids of, of the, the, the guy that went to the border. Um, but yeah, I find, I've only found that sense of community here on your channel. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that. Um, oh, wow, that's very kind of you. It's, and and, no, and how, it's, how unfortunate it's, you've had to wait um, 40 years for someone to show that sense of community. I'm glad that we could help. Well, you know, when, when we, when we, it's a when we now, yeah, it's when we, not when we, it's when we mm -hmm. came down here. Uh, it, we were very lucky. We had neighbors who were extradition, and then a neighbor next to them was extradition. So we had interleading gates. So we all visited each other, dogs, kids and cats and everything. So it was lovely. But then unfortunately, they, they've all passed away. Mm. So the people living there now obviously aren't the same. <laughs> but anyway, but as I said, this, this channel of yours is awesome. You, you, you are a gentleman of gentlemen. You have honesty and integrity. And I'm very, very proud to call you my friend. So just <laughs> well, keep up the good work, Chris. It's very, very you, kind. You know, You're going to get me emotional there. That, seriously. Oh, no, thank well, you so much. I, I, need to, I need to appreciate. I need to appreciate you because you've served your country, and you've done an excellent job. Um, protecting and and looking after the the you know USA, and I'm sorry that in your retirement that you have to deal with an election <laughs> that yeah. you're going through at the moment. Yeah, it's a mess. You don't deserve that. And well, I don't think any veterans or army, uh, the army, I can't think of the term, uh, people who are in the army deserve to be, to have to deal with absolute rubbish like this. So well, hopefully, hopefully it won't be the case. We'll hopefully be sorted out. But even if, even if we wind up uh, under the subjugation of the leftists, we will survive. Um, America is a very strong place. And it's also a country with half a billion firearms. So uh, when they try to start prying the firearms from, from 200 million people, they're going to have a hard time. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think we can have the same problem in South Africa because, yeah, things here are not looking the best, as you heard earlier with, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, Ramapuka's speech, yeah. thanks to Kakduk, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure the rest of you, you know, People watching will know what I'm talking about. It's just very, very really sad it that we so have sad. to live in live in a world like we are living in now. You know, there's no sense of community. Uh, nobody has a care about anybody except on this channel, <laughs> um, and that's very, very sad. And that's why I say I'm so proud to be a member of your of your um, channel and a moderator. So thank you, Chris. Well, thanks, Lynn, very much. I appreciate you calling in. It's awesome. I appreciate you sharing those thoughts with us. And uh, thanks for sharing uh, some memories of Rhodesia. It's, uh, it was a, a fascinating period of history for those of us outside the region. I can only remotely begin to appreciate what life was like for people growing up there, white and black, in the 1960s and 1970s. Um, it's, uh, and it's, it's a bit of sadness uh, for Rhodesians now that we are 40 years removed from the end of Rhodesia and uh, most folks are now passing on who grew up and lived in that country. Uh, and so there you go. Um, but anyway, it's, it's my pleasure. Thanks a lot for being a loyal supporter of the channel and a, and we really appreciate you on here, Lynn. So thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. No, it's a pleasure, Chris. Thank you. All right, folks, that's Lynn calling in from uh, South Africa. Really appreciate it. Um, I'll get, let Lynn drop off there. Um, okay. There she goes. Whoops. Got to fix that. There we go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've got this thing set up, so it, some, when it backfires, when I do that. Anyway, folks, uh, let's see if we want to get anyone else to call in here very quickly before we uh, – oh, shoot. I have I got to come over here now because my, my computer was getting overburdened, overtaxed, so I had to drop a few things. So when I dropped a few things, um, I wound up losing control of um, a few things. Anyway, so there you go. So the chat – I don't have full control of the chat now because I closed my chat window to save some resources. Anyway, so, yeah, what else we got here? Um, Let's see. Anel says, my dad was in the police and they were sent to fight in Rhodesia. He only said beautiful things about the country and his people. It was at Southwest Africa stage. Yeah, um, was in the British South African Police Service, the BSAP. Um, those guys were there in force. They provided mechanics and helicopters and uh, pilots. There you go. 
And I'm wearing a hockey jersey today, folks. Once again, I'm wearing the chocolate drip. And no, I'm not that. I'm not fat like that. See, look, that's just a jersey. See? <laughs> that's just a jersey. There you go. Anyway, so yeah, it's a hockey jersey with a chocolate drip from Hershey Chocolate. Anyway, cool beans. Um, Wilhelm Haman says, what's your email, Chris? I don't share my email over the stream, Wilhelm. Uh, what you need to go is to the About tab, or alternatively, look below the video. You'll find my handle on Parler and Twitter. My preference is if you send a message, do it on Parler. If you don't have a Parler account, you should set one up. Uh, unlike Twitter, they don't censor content. So you can write whatever you like on there because um, they're actually a legitimate platform, unlike Twitter. But uh, you can reach me either through my Twitter or Parler handle, or you can um, get my email address from the About tab. Go below the video, go below the description of the channel, and there's a email for business purposes. Just click on that. And you'll have to click on a little box to prove you're not a bot. And then it'll reveal the email address. Just copy and paste it and send me an email that way. So uh, feel free to do that, folks. But I don't allow people to put their email addresses in the chat or their mobile numbers because people will abuse you um, who don't agree with you. And uh, just uh, just for a little bit of OPSEC, operational security, we just want to make sure we protect people's identity and their information. So there you go. So please send me something there, Wilhelm. I appreciate it. Um, let's see what else. So off topic, says Vitir. But who else is following the civil war happening in Ethiopia right now? Tigray region. Uh, yeah, yeah, same Ethiopia, see the African Union. Yes, but Tigray is nowhere near the African Union, which is in Addis Ababa, which is where I used to be stationed. Uh, Vitir, uh, it is off topic, but I did cover this in a stream this week. In fact, I talked about it extensively and talked about what's going on uh, as the government has bombed positions in Tigray and has declared all soldiers in the Ethiopian National Defense Force to be... Um, to be deserters who were based there. Now, that's funny because most of them never made any position clear that they were deserting the military, so they've now been declared criminals simply because they had the misfortune of being stationed in Tigray. Can you imagine that? I'd be like saying that all, all soldiers currently assigned to Pennsylvania are, are traitors and treasonous, and they're wanted for insurrection when all they did was get assigned here. They didn't sign up for any nonsense. So it's quite crazy what's happening in Ethiopia, but it's not surprising. And besides, it's not the only war taking place in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has over nearly 70 uh, self-declared terrorist organizations inside the country. Now, the U.S. doesn't recognize most of them as terrorist organizations. Some are liberation movements, but they've had a hot slash cold war going on with groups all over Ethiopia for decades. Uh, so having lived there, it was quite an interesting experience in Ethiopia. But yeah, that is the same Ethiopia. The original Jacobins were from the French Revolution, but yeah, but then we had the Jacobites in Scotland. Um, I like your kind of hockey, ice hockey. I do watch that sometimes. Anel Rothman, it is ice hockey. They, the, the Hershey Bears are one of the original members of the American Hockey League, which you have the National Hockey League, the top professional league. Then you have a more, uh, at the lower, the, the highest level of minor leagues where players are developed and go up to the top league but that wasn't the purpose originally, uh, is the American Hockey League, which has uh, like 34, 36 teams all around the country and in Canada now. So Hershey, uh, Hershey, the city of Hershey, Hershey Chocolate from Milton Hershey is just right down the road, about 25 or 30 minutes from here. And they have a massive arena that seats over 10,000, nearly 11,000 people, a big venue for concerts and things like that. But the, uh, the Hershey Bears play there and I'm a huge fan. I go to 20 to 30 games a year. And I love it. They're fantastic. They're the feeders team, the farm team for the Washington Capitals. And so a lot of the people who won the Stanley Cup I actually got to watch play and develop as players here in Hershey. And they've been very successful. They've won more uh, championships in that league than any other team in the league. They've won 11 Calder Cups over the course of their 80-plus year history. So about every eight years they win a championship on average. So pretty good. Although there have been some long gaps where they didn't get any. And, and then in early part of this uh, century, they won two or three championships really quickly. Uh, Gareth says, what needs to be done to get the criminals in the FFB held accountable for their actions? Well, what needs to be done is for the EFF to make a mistake and, and harm cadres in the ANC. And if they do that, then suddenly they'll get attention. But short of that, nothing's going to happen. Um, the world needs to know. Hashtag the world must know. The world must know about what's happening in South Africa. We have to help them. Sean Eastman says, excellent chat. Signing off from Clarksville. Do you go to the market and buy some provisions? Y'all have a good one. Peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs> hair grease. Thank you. Thank you, Sean, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Uh, They're in Clarksville, Tennessee. Been there many times myself, folks. Uh, Walking Beauty says, do you watch the Loving Life channel? I was just looking at your subscriptions. Um... I do watch Loving Life on occasion, Walk in Beauty, but a number of Loving Life subscribers have been abusive towards me on my channel. I have no idea why, what's going on there. Uh, somehow I was caught up in a, a dispute between Ronaldo Jos and Scott Balson, and I have no idea why, but people drug me into it and falsely attributed things to me, and um, I, I just call people out for that nonsense. I'm not part of that conversation. Uh, I've actually never said anything bad about, um, look at... Um, 
I've never said anything bad about um, about Scott Balson or his channel, Loving Life. Um, I have, however, been blocked on his channel for some reason, Walk in Beauty. I was blocked on that channel. I have no idea why. Um, I, in fact, I proved this again today, uh, or today or yesterday. I went to Loving Life's channel and was watching a stream and uh, trying to communicate with folks, and people who are my subscribers couldn't see me. And uh, people rarely don't say hi if they see you on another stream. I, I visit other YouTubers' channels and I watch their broadcasts and I say hello to people and people see me in there. And uh, no one said hello because someone has blocked me on his channel. I don't know if Scott did that or if it was Marlene or whoever it was, but someone has blocked me on that channel in a malicious fashion and I have no idea why. So I have no beef with a Loving Life or Scott Balson. He was a guest on my channel. I was a guest on his channel. I reached out to them afterwards because I always follow up with many of my guests you know, with a month or two afterwards to check and see how they're doing and uh, touch base with them, and I never heard back from them. Uh, I'll give the fact that they're a very busy channel. When Scott uh, recently reported that he was no longer going to be doing videos, um, I did a video saying thank him for his contributions to draw attention to events in South Africa, and also um, wishing him well and saying it's a shame that he's ending. Uh, then I was... Um, not attacked, but people said, well, you're reporting fake news. I didn't report fake news. I reported what the guy said. Then he came back and he did a stream the next day and he said, well, I'm not leaving the channel. I'm not shutting it down. He actually changed what he said. And so I corrected what I had said based on what he corrected. So yeah, no, but uh, there are a number of, of, of viewers on his channel, um, almost like cult members, the way they behave. I don't know why. Um, that's not a cult. I don't know why people behave that way. Uh, it's just a channel on YouTube that does a lot of coverage of South Africa, and, and that's good that someone draws attention to South Africa. But yeah, I've been abused by some of his followers, and I have no idea why. Uh, many people who follow my channel loyally actually uh, first heard of me on Loving Life when I was interviewed there. So it's really a strange situation. Uh, I guess some people have difficulty with facts and the truth, and they just really have issues with that. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm very familiar with it. I have not put down uh, Loving Life as one of my subscriptions that's on the channel. Folks, I'm subscribed to a lot of channels. Um, you don't see all my subscriptions. Those are just the ones that I promoted. I haven't promoted Scott uh, Scott Balson's channel because uh, it would be pretty much a sucker of me to promote a channel which I can't chat on. I've been blocked from chatting on there, so why would I promote his channel on my channel? Say, go watch his channel when his channel discriminates against me. Now, I'm not saying Scott does, but somebody on the channel does, and I've mentioned it to several people who are subscribers on my channel, and they said they would follow up on it a couple times now, and to be fair, the most recent time someone said they follow up on it was yesterday, but uh, I've asked people in the past, I said, what's going on? Uh, but when someone calls me a liar, and I have demonstrable proof that they're mistaken, uh, I don't appreciate that. I had one person come to my channel and attack Erica on this channel, because she said, she was blocked on that channel and so I went on the channel to say hello because it was a very inter interesting guest on there wanted to talk about history in Southern Africa and I commented and I was surprised that nobody said anything or nobody I started seeing names of people from my channel around there so I um I said hey to them and nothing so then I tried to experiment I did the at symbol and like 16 different people who are on my channel that I saw appearing in the chat and they all came up I said hello to them nobody said hi to me Many of them came on my stream later in the day because my stream comes after that. And I said, hey, how you doing? And somebody mentioned uh, Loving Life. And I said, well, I said, hi to you guys. Well, I didn't see you. I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Yeah, you didn't see me because somebody on the channel has blocked me. So I'm not going to promote Loving Life on my channel when I'm being blocked on that channel. That's just ridiculous. It's childish. And I don't know who's doing it. Um, let me see what else we got here. Um, Boom Shakalaka says, crazy, just found my grandmother's birth certificate. She was born on a British military base during World War II in southern Rhodesia in 1938. Wow. Are you serious, Boom Shakalaka? That's fascinating. Uh, Walking Beauty, it's because of the Ronaldo argument. I'm sure Ronaldo is a jerk. Um, perhaps Walking Beauty, but why am I part of that? Um, because I appear on Ronaldo's channel. If Scott asked me to come on his channel, I go on his channel. You know, um, I, I just, so draw, drag me into it. It's just crazy. Do I play ice hockey? Sir, uh, Sir, S Cyrus Virus High Veld Lion says, do you play hockey? I have played, uh, but I'm not a particularly good ice skater. I didn't start learning. I didn't learn to ice skate until my, when I, I was nearly 30 when I started, uh, 28 when I, I saw, taught myself how to ice skate. I never ice skated because ice skating was for wealthy people. I didn't grow up in wealth. And then I went to university and went to the army. So I was never around the ice other than watch hockey games. So I started teaching myself. And the first time I was out, I was ice skating. So I can ice skate now, but I'm not particularly effective. I'm much more effective in inline, you know, rollerblades. I've played hockey and rollerblades, and I'm pretty good at that. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, not 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 organized, just, just playing on the ice. So I wish I had grown up with it. It would have been nice. Um, loving life, unfortunately, sensationalist, and they fight for no reason. Uh, I have no idea, Alwyn. Um, people say that about them. Um, I left in 1980, came to school in South Africa, left my folks in Zimbabwe. They immigrated in 1983, says Lynn. 
Um, uh, Sean Lewis, uh, Vernon Eilager. Pity they attack Chris. He's always nice no matter which channel he's on. Well, thank you, Vernon. That's I think that's pretty much true. I do get excited. We do get to emotion in the conversation. And I do point fingers. And yes, occasionally a word or two of profanity slips out. Usually I go back and delete that from the stream after the fact. But but uh, yeah, but no, I, I tend to be fair uh, with everybody. Um, by the way, folks, just so you know, when I have a guest on my channel, in case anyone's curious, I try to talk to my guest ahead of time to ask him, is there anything you are, don't want to discuss? And if they have a topic they don't want to discuss, then then I let them come on the channel. Now, some people say that that's not how you do journalism. You don't let people get away with it. Well, this is journalism, but it's also it's it's also informative from a standpoint that it's kind of like a talk show, you know, when you invite someone in. If you ask the people I interview on my channel, do they feel like they've been interviewed? Most of the time they feel like, well, I just felt like I sat down and, you know, around a braai and, and, and had a beer or just had a coffee and just had a conversation with someone. That's how they feel. And that's intentional. That's the intent. And that's one reason why when you see my channel, I do this unique thing, which I've never seen anyone else do. And I'm not, it's not copyrighted or trademarked, but I put this, the guest in the bottom corner at about 60% of the screen and then myself in the upper right hand corner. That is to emphasize that the guest is more important than the host, although my role is important there. So I do that when I have just a single guest. When it's more than one guest, then we do the little Brady Bunch window. But um, for me, it's a conversation to ask questions. So if a guest says, I don't want to talk about this, I don't want to talk about that, if it's reasonable, I say, sure. Uh, but for instance, I had Hein Marks on the channel recently to talk about when he was up in uh, Seneca on the 16th of October. And because there's a lot of stuff being spread all around about what did and didn't happen between Willem Petza and Hein Marks and, and, um, and uh, what's his name? Um, um, oh, gosh. Um, Fonsal. Uh, Fonsal. Isaac Fonsal. Yeah. So all this going on about what was happening there and really distracting about what happened in Seneca. So I had Hein Marks on who kindly came on to explain what his role was and what he did there. And Hein said, everything's on the table. When I asked Steve Hofbauer to come on the channel, he said, talk about anything you want. So I do that. Um, and sometimes I've had a guest say, I prefer not to talk about this. And that's fine. The purpose of the channel is not to put someone in jeopardy or cause harm for them, but it's ability for people to listen to someone interesting, to learn something about them or the topic they're familiar with or the access that they've had. So I asked my, my guest ahead of time. The other thing I don't talk about is I never ask my guests about their immediate family. In my view, it's nobody's business whether somebody's married to a goat or they're married to 26 wives or 24 husbands, whether they have 15 children, they have no children. Uh, if they choose to talk about that on my, in, in, in an interview on my channel, that is their prerogative. And then once they open the door, then we can talk about it. But the reason I don't do that is for people's personal safety. We see the behavior. We see people like Alexander Ocasio-Cortez. We must make lists of these sycophants who, who propped up the Trump administration. So if you worked in government, you are now a target of this vile, corrupt leftist? Hmm... Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't let people um, do that to my guests. So anyway, there you go. So walking beauty. I haven't watched Loving Life in about a year now since they were complaining about the president. And I was trying to bring awareness about farmers. Um, walking beauty. What do you, What do you mean? Uh, comp you're trying to bring awareness about farm owners walking beauty. Well, I do that endlessly on this channel. So love to chat with you. Send me an email. Love to chat, touch base there, walking beauty. Also, the name is pretty cool. Do you run a beauty salon or is it just like you're drop dead gorgeous? Inquiring minds want to know. Is Walking Beauty just drop dead gorgeous? Let's find out. So now, folks, we turn to Walking Beauty. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. No. <laughs> um, yes, what? Yes. Okay, you said yes, yes to what? I just said nine things, and you're 30 seconds behind. So Zenobo, Zenobio Ricci says, has the U.S. military ever conducted studies on the Zulu Scouts and the operations the regiment carried out during the Regent War? Um, I believe the Green Berets have done that. I have done it endlessly and I've promoted it. For instance, when we were facing an insurgency in Iraq in 2003, summer of 2003, and the Pentagon was pulling their hair out, not knowing what to do, I started telling generals, because I was working at the Pentagon in 2004, uh, I started working, I started telling the generals who were there, I said, listen, what you need to do is you need to hire Lieutenant Colonel Ron Reed Daly as a consultant. He is the former uh, commander of the Zulu Scouts, an organization he created based on what he was directed by the general to do. And he created that organization and they were the single most successful counterinsurgency unit, unit in the history of mankind, in my view, or certainly in the 20th century. And I said, Lieutenant Colonel Rodri Data lives in South Africa. You should touch base with him and um, you can get some great advice on how to do this. Their techniques were fantastic. Now, trying to turn sectarian Arabs 
Sunnis and Shiites in Iraq is a very different proposition than turning uh, Ennebele Shona, Suzuru Shona, and things like that. But it's not it's not impossible. And also, they also have many things to share. Alas, the Department of Defense did not listen to my advice. I was simply a major and not getting enough attention, and it fell on deaf ears. What I did also offer to them is that instead of having our vehicles blown up all the time, these plastic Humvees, is that we should be buying um, mine-protected vehicles from the South Africans who have them in the thousands sitting in warehouses and parking uh, lots because they're not using them anymore. And so uh, we wound up developing the MRAP based on South African licensing and technology when we could have just bought them right off the shelf and provided protection immediately and shipping these vehicles to Iraq. But we didn't do that. But eventually they did listen. I don't know if it was to me or they just figured it out on their own, but they, they certainly did get the MRAP, which is based on South African anti-mine protection methods, which are very effective. So there you go. Um, Walking Beauty, I'm Navajo and Cherokee. God bless you. I'm 55. Wow. Navajo and Cherokee, that rocks. I'm sure that's a bit of a conflict, though. Navajo and Cherokee. I mean, they're not from even remotely the same part of the country, unless you say they're from Oklahoma, because they're all portion of Oklahoma. But wow, thank you, uh, Walking Beauty. That's pretty awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Navajo poem, that's pretty cool. Uh, we should talk to, you know, I've never had any Native Americans interviewed on the program because we focus on Africa, but maybe I should do that. I, I don't really know many Native Americans at all, to be honest. Um, there, there are over a million Native Americans, about a million and a half in the country today. Uh, Bulawe, Matopos, Worldview, Where Roads is Tube. Yeah, I've been to Matopos. It's Matopos, Neil. M-A-T-O-P-O-S. It's probably just a typo on your part. Matopos, the, the, the top of the world is what it's called. It's amazing. Actually, I have a photograph of it here. I'd have to see if I can find it for you guys very quickly. But Matopos is amazing. Um, let me see if I can find that very quick. If I can find it, I'll bring it in here. I'll show you a picture that I took 20 years ago, I think it was, back when the farm murders were um, getting underway there. So let me see if I can find this very quickly here. Um, I'll look for it. Yeah, but Matopas is, uh, is amazing. The whole area, it looks like gumdrops. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Okay, I think I might be able to find this picture, folks. Yep, yeah, this is from August of 2000, if I can find it. Let me see. There's Vic Falls. Okay. Well, let me see. Matopas should be one of the last photographs I have from that trip. So let me just get down here and see. Ah, there it is. There it is. Okay. So I'll get two pictures here to show you guys Matopas. This is Cecil Grove's. Cecil Groves, Cecil Rhodes grave. I'm mixing words there. This is Cecil Rhodes grave. And then um, this is what the landscape looks around Matopos. You can see these hills in the distance. And this is from the spot. So this is Matopos National Park in uh, Rhodesia, or Zimbabwe, excuse me, Zimbabwe. Whoops, it's Rhodesia Day. So I, I spoke a faux pas, a slip of the tongue. So this would be Cecil Rhodes grave site, a photograph that I took in Matopos. Matopos. Okay, so let's bring that up, folks. I mean, it'll take me just a moment to get it here. And um, here we go. There you go. All right. Whoop, whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. That's Cecil Rhodes' grave in Matopos. That's right there. You can see it. Check it out, folks. Isn't that awesome? Not the grave. I mean, but look at those big boulders there. It's just like little gumdrops sitting around there. That's where Cecil Rhodes is buried in Zimbabwe. That's below Bulawayo. If you go south of Bulawayo, you'll find that, folks. So there's that one. Let me pull up this one very quickly. Um, this is um, what the scenery looks like around that. So, so let me bring this one up very quickly here, and you can check it out. Uh, since we're on the theme of Rhodesia, Zimbabwe today, um, it's perfectly fine to stick with this. So that's what the train looks like around there in Matopos National Park. Look at those hills as far as you can see, looking to the southwest in this case from Cecil Rhodes' uh, burial site, and that's what you see. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. It's beautiful countryside, wonderful place, uh, fantastic. Uh, once again, there's Cecil Rhodes' gravesite right there, folks. Cecil Rhodes. Anyway, there you go. So a little bit of interesting stuff to share with you guys. I hope you like that. Walking beauty. A lot of people, citizens, South Africa, complain about the president. Okay. Um, yeah, so so walking beauty, if you were talking about farm murders, how did you get onto farm murders being a Navajo slash Cherokee? That's a fascinating story in and of itself. Alwyn's still here. He says, true, the name uh, Koi and San would also be interesting. Yeah, I'd love to interview some Koi and San, um, like the guys that are protesting at the union buildings in K in, um, K in Pretoria. Uh, they've been protesting for over two years and being ignored by the ANC because they're asking for the ANC to recognize them as the original inhabitants of South Africa. The ANC doesn't want to do that. Do you know why the ANC doesn't want to do that? Because to admit that the Koi and San are the original inhabitants of South Africa would mean that the the government would have to admit that the Bantu peoples are colonizers of South Africa, which is true, but they don't want to admit that. Only only white people are evil colonizers. No, you're all colonizers. The Koyan San, they were probably also colonizers at one point, probably pushed aside, I don't know, maybe Homo Naledi or somebody like that hundreds of thousands of years ago. 
I know that was too far back. They weren't they were times. All, timelines don't sync up. Don't call me on the archaeological timeline here for anthropology. I'm just throwing that out there because I don't have any other other groups of Homo sapiens or Homo or hominids that were living in South Africa when the coin sign wound up there. They didn't just appear there. They came there at some point themselves. But they've been there for at least fifty thousand years. So I think we'll give them we'll give them rights of indigenous population based on tenure. Tenure of fifty thousand years. I think trumps sixteen hundred years of Bantus and three hundred forty eight years of European. So there you go. <laughs> is South Africa still making some of the best military vehicles? No, they used to back in the day. You know, they do make some really impressive stuff there. Um, yeah, they do. But um, what they do is kind of been diminished and uh, it's not really being bought by anybody. For instance, the Ruivok, nobody's ever bought the Ruivok other than the South African Defense Force. The Turkey, Turkey said that it wanted it, but it really, to me, was just an effort to get Augusta Bell to lower the price, uh, Augusta, for their helicopters that they wanted to buy. So it was just they were just using them. Look at this Hendo's trying to find walking beauty on Facebook. Hey, hey let's look at the chatting and flirting going on over here. <laughs> um, walking beauty. Uh, John DeClerc says the Rattel was an interesting design. I already say that the current AFF under development may bank, bankrupt Danelle. That's true. Um, the armored fighter vehicle they're currently de de developing is not going to make any money and they're going under. Um, what else? You should get on Chris's stream to talk to us. Would appreciate you. Uh, yeah, let me. Um, let me um, put this up one more time before we get out of here for the evening. Um, here is the link, folks. This is the link. If, and we'll take one more call in if anybody wants to call in again. No repeat callers. Alwyn. Lynn. <laughs> um, stop believing in the fake news media after they called us jihad and put us in dog cages and numbered like war criminals. Huh? Called who jihad? Rumor has it Joe Biden needs to go to Brockenville. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe Biden will be going to visit Nelson Mandela, his dear friend, at uh, Robben Island uh, in Soweto. Say what? <laughs> Robin is encouraging Erica to call him, but you notice Robin isn't calling. Him. Of course, Robin is from Western Cape, and um, and so um, unless we're talking, I suppose, about the Khoisan, maybe she wouldn't call in. And El says Khoisan is said to be the oldest tribe in South Africa, and most tribes are from. That's what the sign is saying. Well, that's what the DNA says, Anel. That's what the DNA and the archaeological evidence says. I can show you. Oh, 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 all one's back in the waiting room. And see, I said no repeat callers. Um, but since no one else is calling in, I'll entertain all one for just a couple of moments here. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Now let's see if, if Alwyn gets his he gets his speakers all wrong, he's out immediately. He's out immediately. <laughs> uh, okay, so his audio is connecting. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, can EFF go to Mountainburg? I want to see something. That's funny. Okay, Robin, I'm rubbish. Okay. Hey Chris. Hey, what's up? You call back in. I said no repeat callers, and you call back in. <laughs> oh, you know, that's just that's just how we yeah how we roll. You know, <laughs> you're challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, listen, Alwyn, this sounds like vote counting in Pennsylvania. You get to you get to vote twice. You get to vote twice. <laughs> you just you just got you just got to recount and then we check. We know, know. we don't know. We so, don't know. So Kate Cross says the beard is back, but not quite because his camera's off. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so what's uh, on, what's what's on your mind? Because everybody's really curious to get walk. Everybody's really curious to get walk in beauty on the channel. So what's on your mind? <laughs> uh, no, I uh, I thought like the whole um, indigenous thing was very interesting. With um, uh, sorry, I, I, I the beauty. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk in beauty. Yeah, yeah. I I love that idea. Uh, what I was saying um, is the Nama. In Amma in, in Namibia. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, who are all, yes, yes. So I, I would think that is like a very interesting topic that that that, that should get some attention. Uh, this idea of like the Khoi Khoi and the Sun and the Nama and all these uh, nomadic tribes and how they function, or at least what's left of them. Uh, I, I, I think that, that that would be a very, very, very interesting topic. Well, here's a, here's a very esoteric topic, and maybe I should find my paper, but at university, I wrote a research paper on the indigenous medical practices of the San in the Kalahari. <laughs> mm. have you, Chris, have you ever heard of um, uh, the, the stoned ape theory? Stoned ape theory? Uh, as in like, you know, yeah. smoking daga? What are you talking about? No, no, no. <laughs> um, it was a... It was a 
uh, anthropologist uh, at Bit University uh -huh. who actually, uh, I think Joe Rogan did a bit about, about this as well. Um, he went and he studied the, the cave paint, paintings um, uh, by the Koi Koi and the Sun mm -hmm. in South Africa. And he figured out that, well, according to him at least, um, they ate shrooms. And ah, they magic, magic mushrooms. Uh, okay. Yeah. And under this hallucinogenic effect, they painted the, the images. But well, this, this raises the whole thing about like, because um, uh, psilocybin does actually influence uh, the brain. Uh, so hallucinogen, and that's what it does. Well, so, I, I have to be honest. Um, I have to be honest, Alvin, because I think that um, I, I ordered a pizza last week on Tuesday, and it, I think it had mushrooms on it. And I think that I've been having a hallucinogenic nightmare for eight days now because um, I, I woke up from from eating my pizza, and 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 someone told me that Joe Biden got seventy five million votes. You know? And I but said, to live in America, to just, live in America where you can order a pizza with mushrooms on it. <laughs> I, I, th I think that I'm having a hallucinogenic nightmare here from, <laughs> uh, from eating shrooms because, I mean, how in the world could 75 million people vote for a guy who can't draw flies? Your dog can take a dump on your front yard and draw more flies than Joe Biden can. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe it. I um, honestly, like, it is... Uh, it is scary. It is really scary to think that um, if if your democratic process can be influenced uh, in any way, and that people would that anyone would say like, okay, no, it needs to be called now, 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 and like rush it without like thinking to themselves like, this is America. If 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 this democratic process isn't uh you know sure if it isn't absolutely absolutely given every form of scrutiny that can be given because this influences the whole world it does uh, now to, to, be, to be fair all when um historically the media have always called and in fact i famously put a picture of one of my streams a few days ago said dewey defeats truman from 1948 when the when the chicago okay. tribune said that uh thomas dewey had defeated um 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 uh Truman, Harry Truman in the election because they went to press before the results were in from the mountain states and the western states, which is where uh, Truman won a very close election. Uh, he really won in three states. I think it was Ohio, California, and one other state made the difference for him. Otherwise, he would have lost the election. But the press called it. The press has done this for decades, and to be fair. But the problem is that it's never been legitimate, and it's usually not so close like it was in 48, 2000, yeah, 2016, and 2020. But it is so close like this that the media is derelict in their duty as the fourth estate calling an election. <laughs> We've now seen that they've had to pull back and pull back um, Arizona because it's still not finished. Trump has closed the 360,000 vote gap to 13, 12,000 now. And they're still counting votes no, in Arizona. And percentage, percent, points of percentages. It, it is crazy. This is the closest, like, uh, at least in my lifetime that I've ever seen it. And also, um, like, everybody forgets. It's like, I, I don't know if I got this from you or yeah. from Ben, uh, ben Shapiro or somebody else. But uh, Al Gore fought for quite some time that he was the U next U.S. president. And this is exactly that scenario. Um, exactly. It isn't. Well, but, but to, to be fair, Joe Biden probably thought he was president before the election. I mean, uh, one day he thinks he's running as a proud Democrat <laughs> for, the, for the Senate. <laughs> the next day he thinks he's the president. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I, come January, he'll, be, he'll, think he's be, being, he'll think he's being inaugurated Chris, as the Dalai Lama. Joe Biden didn't know where the, the eggs are hidden because they, they don't need to hide them in front of him. You know, that's that's what... Oh, you mean the happened. Easter egg hunt? Yeah, they just set them on the table and he can't find them. You know, it's it's a fun game that everyone plays if you if you get to that stage. Um, <laughs> no, and, and that is what is scary, actually, is like they push up a candidate that they know. They, uh, actually, that is the worst of this whole thing is it's 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 been bothering me for ages is the idea that the democrats cannot produce a decent candidate no. and now they, they they push him in front because they know well at least they believe that he won't last and then crazy you know really crazy shit is coming 
and that's going to be his vice president is going to take over and then we're dealing with you know flat out socialism whatever democratic socialism that's a, that's a, that's most a, a fun new way to to word things is yeah, to call it democratic socialism that's an oxymoron but this breaking news uh boom shakalak has just notified us that trump won't need to leave the white house because biden can't find it <laughs> nice. there you go yeah. there you go all right well nice. uh, <laughs> okay thanks for, yeah no, the indigenous thing is very interesting the of course in botswana the the son are known as the basaro which is not the nicest of phrases or terms it's kind of considered a derogatory term but it is the actual term they call the bushman in uh because bushman is considered to be derogatory i don't find bushman to be a derogatory term of course i'm not a bushman yeah, I, I, all the all the all the Kwe Kwe and sun people i've ever spoken to have never um like they, they like the term oh they don't like but they they've never disagreed with the term bushman well, it's, uh, it's, at all it's kind of like the the washington redskins and the the logo is a proud looking warrior with a feather in his cap and that you know, so it's it's showing you know respect for for Native Americans, but it's racist because he's called a redskin. Oh my gosh, come on! But you know, like with all of these things, there's, there's people like it's SJW culture. You know, it's people grabbing onto like picking victims so that they can look good. Um, yeah. It's got nothing to do with the actual people. Like all of the Koi Koi and the Sun that I've, and I have spoken to quite a few. I've been on like one or two film sets where I actually got to meet actual fully fledged, the last of a few um, indigenous, uh, uh, you know, that's a, but. <laughs> Well, listen, I, ha I have to say, I have to say, I'm I actually, I feel kind of humbled. I mean, you've mentioned things you watch like Ben Shapiro and uh, I think you said Joe Rogan, if I heard correctly. Um, uh, you watch these channels and you watch my channel. Wow. <laughs> feel humbled. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. I mean, Chris, you're, you're, you're the voice of reason. Well, um, I try to be. <laughs> honestly, you know, like even my mom, you know, when I, when I'm streaming and putting it on the TV and. I, uh, you know, we we all agree that, like, thank goodness you're out there. Like I said earlier, um, you're doing the good work, and like, there aren't enough people who, who aren't partisan in that sense. You know, who aren't who aren't like fighting a fight just for fighting a fight. Who are fighting a fight for what they believe in, and 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 convincing, not convincing, but stating what they feel. Uh, I think I think a lot of the uh, 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 chaos and the disorder that we're seeing now has more to do with people who are disingenuous, who, who want to who want to say they care about something just so that they can feel enriched. But you, you, um, you are actually being objective, and and thank goodness for that. At least we have a voice or two, you know. So well, I'm trying. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. It's uh, it's it's a little challenging sometimes when you get the uh, you get the trolls that show up there. It can be quite mm. uh, frustrating stuff. You know me. I've been swearing at them for ages. <laughs> I try not to do that on my, on my channel, but yeah, no, I despise the trolls. And that's another thing. Like the media. Let's say this. Let's let's say pick up the Barkenfeld thing. Um, yeah. It is. It is so sad. I did, today this morning. I I spent way too much time on social media arguing with another white guy who was say, stating that like the EFF were fighting the typical. Um, what do you guys call it again? Um, uh, race critical uh, race theory. He was arguing that now he, he actually brought up busting a myth and all of that. And this idea that like critical race theory somehow magically excuses ethno 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 nationalism, and um, I I think sometimes that's why I stepped away for quite a bit. I think sometimes um, these arguments or these debates um, don't you're never con gonna convince those people. You know, their, yeah. their, their ideology has brainwashed them to a point where the echo chamber has become a, a point of no return.
No, absolutely. We saw that, uh, 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 what's her name? I'm sorry, I just got to spray from here. Uh, Walking Beauty said a few minutes ago, a lot of us, because she's Native American, Cherokee, and Navajo, she said a lot of us were angry that they took away the Washington. You know, the Washington Redskins are now called the Washington football team, and their symbol is a W. <laughs> a W. We hear that. You know, like, out of all the shit that's going on in the world, that is the thing that we need, that's, we need, that's, we need to worry about the names of teams, you know. It's a priority. Like, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, let's not look at hunger. Let's not look at famine. Let's not look at uh, all the all the wrongs that are out there. But that is the point, isn't it? I mean, isn't Absolutely. that what the SJWs do? They they focus on an issue that they know they can't win, but that has no resolve. Uh, that 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 they can keep on milking as long as possible. And yeah, uh, that's there you go. Sad, like, but it will defeat them. You know why? Because we're honest and we're honorable, and that never gets defeated. And thank you for this. Well, and, so. and, and I think that's part of it. But I think another reason that we'll defeat them is because we have Rika Snell. Bosman Lan, fought my hunt. Lay my order on second. Boki fat your slope. Ya boki fat your slope. Anyway. Rika Snell, there you go. Uh, Good stuff. Good culture, stuff. Bro. Now, culture, if I play it, I'll culture. get a copyright, but I can just sing in a horrible fashion the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, cool beans. Uh, let me let you go, and then um, get ready to close up here, and I'll see if Walking Beauty wants to call in. She doesn't have to appear on camera if she doesn't want to, but I'll put the link in one more time, and I'll hold it to give her a chance to call in in case she does want to call in. Oh, yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. seems to want her by popular demand. I'm fascinated. Yeah, yeah. I'm fascinated. So, all right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate all one for calling. Always in. Curious. And um, nobody wins on the beard. We're both winners with these beards. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's not a competition, bro. No, it's, it's definitely. Well, it is with Ronaldo. It is together. <laughs> it, it is with Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hands down defeat. <laughs> there you go. All right, folks. There you go. That's all one to Bruin calling in once again. Repeat call in. Uh, and there's Oliver Hilton. Okay, Oliver Hilton, I'm going to let in the room as Alwyn drip drops off. Okay. And let's see what's going on if we get Oliver in here. Is it Oliver or Olivier? Oliver, okay. So let me put uh, him in the waiting room. Oh, I have new features on here. It says spotlight. I can spotlight people. What's that, Oliver? Oliver Olivier or Oliver Hilton is calling in. That's not walk-in beauty. So let's see. Oh, maybe another day. Start dinner for my family. Not a worry, Walking Beauty. Not trying to put you on the spot. Just everybody was asking for you, and I like to offer to my audience what they're looking for. So we'll get you another time. Thanks for coming in here, at Walking Beauty. Appreciate your commentary, Robin. Okay. Oops, we lost. We lost. We lost Hilton. Okay, folks. So we're coming up on nearly two hours. Um, Siren is talking to Walking. Everybody's talking to Walking Beauty. Hey, this is my channel. Talk to me. <laughs> Critical theory comes from the Frankfurt School. Yeah, those those those, ugh, those people on the left hand side of the aisle. Um, my beard is far inferior, but Ronaldo's can't beat mine. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's this? Somebody when they're thirteen. Uh, Siren says, but you don't need to take this stuff to have a spiritual connection. Our minds are strong enough. My first book I got was when I was thirteen. Wow, uh, cool. Uh, I'm a huge fan of books, as you can see. I'm always promoting books on my channel. If someone asked me for books in Africa, uh, I'm still looking for the ones that'll be good ones to help out with that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, chocolate drip uh, hockey jersey here. It's pretty cool. I'm a massive hockey fan. Rocky, uh, Rocky, yeah, Rocky and hug me. <laughs> so that's hockey and rugby are my two favorite sports. Uh, hello, Chris. How are you today? Says Kim Labaskakna. Well, Kim, I'm fine yourself. You are a bit tardy to the stream. How are you doing? Your beard is also beautiful, says Siren. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm not accustomed to having a beard, folks. You know, I was in the Army for 36 and a half years. Can't have facial hair. So this is a new feature for me. And uh, I, I, I debate at times about whether to cut it off or not. But it seems so popular, I've left it on. Lynn says, Chris is a gentleman and a brilliant ethical character. Well, thank you so much for that. And uh, I'll check if I can't find the video and let you. Oh, yeah. Someone asked me earlier to play the song. Let me see if I can find this because he gave a super chat. Uh, David Scobie. So taking the easy way home from David Scobie. Let me see if I can't find that. Um, and I'll, I'll risk getting copyright strike because uh, I hope you're still here. That was from Chris Nor Norvi, Norvi earlier. So my apologies, Chris, for not getting to it sooner. But um, it's not something I'm familiar with. So let me see if I can't find this song. Okay. David Scobie, taking the easy way home. Uh, David Scobie. Oh, it's from 1981. Okay. Right. Let me put that over here. Oops. Where's that window at? Um, hang on a second. Uh, okay. Okay. Hmm. 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 
Okay, so let me get this thing up here. It's not, okay, I need to get that up. Okay, let me drag this over here. All right, David Scobie. I'm not, this is five minutes long. That's a long one, so um, hopefully I won't get a copyright slam on this one, folks, but I'll bring it up in case he wants to see it. All right, okay, so uh, Chris, great to see you having Dr. Peter Hammond as your guest, a very well-informed man. Yeah, he'll be on, on uh, the channel on Tuesday, and uh, that's by request. People have asked me to have him on the channel for a long time, and uh, I've not had the opportunity, so people put us in touch. He'll be on the channel. I says we should go and buy the team and change the name back to the Redskins. <laughs> Uh, Son of Siren says, wish to arrive on stream earlier. We have a spiritual live stream. Enjoy learning about different beliefs and different points of view. Yeah, we were talking today about Rhodesia Day, folks. That's what this theme was all about today. And we were talking about the, a little bit about the history of Rhodesia with some people who grew up in Rhodesia, as well as talking about the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland, which was southern Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, northern Rhodesia, Zambia, and Nyasaland, Malawi. We talked about that. The peak of the population in southern Rhodesia for white Europeans or Rhodesians was about 300,000 roughly. And uh, today that number is very far below 50,000 at this point with what's going on in Zimbabwe. Uh, but even in 2000, there were still 125,000 um, white Zimbabweans. And today that number's dwindled greatly as people fled from there. So northern Rhodesia or Zambia never had more than about 70, 75,000 um, white Rhodesians. And Malawi was peaking about 9,000. But um, there you go. So uh, that was at a population in 1960, about 240,000 whites and 2.8 million black Zimbabweans at the time. Today, it's about 14 million black Zimbabweans living in Zimbabwe and about 5 million living elsewhere. 2.5 million in South Africa and the other 2.5 million scattered around the world. And most of the great human capital that Zimbabwe needs for a success is actually living abroad. Go to Canary Wharf in the United Kingdom, folks, to the financial district in the UK, and you'll find thousands of Zimbabweans making a difference in UK's economy and contributing very little to Zimbabwe. I'll have a guest on the show next week who's from Zimbabwe. His name is Shelton, and he runs a, uh, a charity known as Forgotten Voices, which helps uh, people in Zimbabwe. He'll be my guest on the channel next week. We're setting it up right now. He's from a local charity here in central Pennsylvania. And I believe he is their charity is uh, just outside of Dillsburg, which is not too far from here. And um, he will be on my guest next week. We'll be talking about Forgotten Voices. And if you want to learn more about how to help them and, and folks in Zimbabwe in the desperate situation they're in, you can check into that stream. So that'll be next week. So I hope you guys can tune in for that. Yes, I did grow up in Rhodesia too. What a great life. Kim Labaskakni says, yeah, we had that earlier on. We played uh, What a Time It Was from Clem, the Rhodesian um, songwriter. Walking Beauty, stop be watching for the notification. Take care. Yeah, Walking Beauty, the notifications don't pop up. They don't pop up, so you've got to check regularly on your own. Or if you're a, a subscriber to the channel, you can go to the Telegram group, Chris Wyatt Africa, and you can subscribe to the Telegram group for free. If you are a member, you can do that, and you can also become a member of Chris Wyatt Africa's WhatsApp group, and you just have to send me an email to request it. I don't put people in the group who are members, number one, because membership fluctuates all the time. Number two, I don't do it because I don't want to expose. In Telegram, your phone number is private. No one can know what your mobile number is. However, in WhatsApp, everyone in the group can see your mobile number. So anyway, so there you go. So that's why I do that. Dr. Pina Hammond also grew up in Rhodesia. Uh, yeah, he's from Cape Town, but grew up in Rhodesia. That's correct, and served in the South African Defense Force. So what do I think of Donald Trump won this election? Uh, Skulls, I do think Donald Trump has won the election and once the fraud is exposed and those ballots removed and or elections rerun in states like Pennsylvania, potentially Michigan, and we see a recount in Georgia and the count is finished in Arizona and Nevada, we will find out that uh, Trump actually won. I'd be surprised he won. There are a lot of ballots. There's no way, come on folks, come on. This is beggar's imagination. Um, that, that Joe Biden got 75 million votes. It just, come on, that's just, that, that, that's, I mean, Barack Obama only got 72 million. Come on, come on, come on, man. Anyway, our ambitions, men and women have caused us much stress. Over ambitious, okay. Probably, um, probably double O. Thank you so much for that. Um, Trump and Chris Wyatt. <laughs> Thanks. Malcolm Stark is here with the clap. All right, folks, 155. I'm going to play this as a five-minute uh, song, and I don't know the song, so I was asked to play this. Hopefully, I won't get cut off midstream. If I do get cut off, that'll be the end of the stream. That will be a copyright block, and hopefully, I don't pay a price for this um, since uh, the person said to me, didn't mean anything malicious. So there's going to be a lot of people with egg on their faces, says Lee Roberts, say, I agree. Ishtimatsu. Here you go, folks. This is from David Scobie taking the easy way home from 1981. I hope you enjoy this. Oh, Lynn's going to cry because she knows this song. Okay. Um, not from Miriam McKay, but this is from uh, David Scobie. Here we go, folks. 
And Rapid Roy says, thanks for the roadie day. It's my pleasure. Um, I hope we focused enough on Rhodesia today. I think we got away from it a few times, but uh, we did cover it quite a bit in a two-hour discussion. Truth is, I was late here. I was watching the U.S. election development, cheering them on. Okay, thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. Michelle says, I'm going to say good night. Nice stream. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. All right, here you go. And this is um, David Scobie, folks. And let me get him up on the screen. Here we go. There you go. So by demand, by request, that was David Scobie taking the easy way home. I actually remember the song now, but I didn't when it didn't strike me. I forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, David Scobie, of course, originally from Scotland, uh, immigrated to. 
to Rhodesia back in the day. Maybe uh, we could get some other folks on here. But anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. I saw that this came in late here from Tony in New Zealand, said Pamwechete. Indeed, Pamwechete, the Zulu Scouts, folks. In case you don't know that, that is what they went by, Pamwechete. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, Lee Roberts says, one honor lived in those times. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I was just a small child back in those days. But uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for tuning in, folks. God bless. We'll catch you here next time. That was David Scobie uh, from 1981. Actually, that was the year before I graduated high school and went to university. So I actually went to the Ohio State Fair that year in 1981. And I also went to the Perry County Fair in which I did quite well. I've got my rosettes. Maybe I'll show you guys that another time. Good night, Father Doc. <laughs> you guys are dissing on my hockey jersey. All right. Song takes you back to younger days. Louisa, I'm with you. It sure does. Um, and now that I've heard it play, I recognize the song. God bless, folks. Have a good night. We'll catch you here next time at Chris White Africa. Really appreciate you tuning in today for Veterans Day. Celebration earlier today. You know, Armistice Day, Remembrance Day in the Commonwealth, but Veterans Day here in the United States, and then also for the later stream for Rhodesia Day. Thank you so much, folks. We'll catch you later. We'll catch you later on. Okay, uh, Johan says, that wasn't even a thought. Probably not, Johan, but eventually you were. And isn't that nice because you're here to share the day with us? God bless, folks. Have a good night. We'll catch you next time. Fred uh, Slater says, spent a week there during the Bush Wars. Absolutely beautiful country. We move there in a heartbeat if things were normal. Well, you know, Zimbabwe is an amazing country. It's a shame that it's run by a gang of thugs. And that's reality. All right, folks, God bless. <laughs> Friar Tuck here saying good night, so long. And as Big Daddy Liberty says, never trust a commie. And as Chris Wyatt says, never trust a cadre. They're coming to take everything you have each and every day. So be careful out there. God bless and be safe. Take care.